things are a go. And we are live on YouTube. Uh, so folks, if you're watching us on YouTube, say hello. Let us know that our audio video is working fine. Uh, now, of course, as you can see, we have some special guests here. I'm going to introduce them soon. And there we go. All right. So let me check in with the chat box. All right. Garrett is here. All right. Sorry. I know there's a little bit of lag. Uh, I'll, I'll cue something up uh, while that's going on. Camera action. All right. Is I have one announcement to make before we jump into the topic, which is you've probably been hearing about this in in my emails, I've, I've mentioned it's like, hey, Real Power BI is coming. Now, those of you who have seen this before are probably really excited. We are. Those who don't know what Real Power BI is, are like, what is that? Right, so if you want to find out more, just go to my website, learnpowerbi.com. And this is what I was working uh, on last night. And and folks, I'm, I'm, I'm having so much fun with my new website, which I built in a day and now spent a few more hours to build the Real Power BI page. And that has all the information about it. The idea is really simple. If you're a small and medium sized business, we're going to help you with your project for free. Is there a catch? Yes, there is. And just go on the page and find out more details. Well, the catch simply is that it's going to be application based. So Real Power BI is something we'd run twice a year. This time it is new and exciting because we decided to solely focus on small and medium sized business. And why did we do that? I explained that in the page. So again, go to learnpowerbi.com and click the Real Power BI link. All right, cool. So let me check in with the folks. So I do see Eric on. I don't see too many comments here. I just want to make sure, hey, is uh, audio video working fine? Let me ask that. Um, perfect. So let me, let me introduce the topic, and then I want to introduce our guest. Uh, so, folks, uh, uh, the topic is how to transition from employee to consultant. And I felt like I needed help with this because uh, my transition was, let's say, pretty abrupt. I pretty much up and left my job at Microsoft. I was an employee one day. And, of course, I've been doing Power BI for a long time, and I had this passion inside me. And there was this buildup to that decision point. But when I left, I left. I walked into my manager's room. I said, I'm leaving. Let's talk about the, you know, kind of the notice period and this, that. And of course, he said, hey, is there something we can do for you? And, and now we know, we all know that that's code for what, right? So, so hey, can we can we help you kind of, uh, right? I mean, up your pay or something like that. Uh, and I said, no. And it was very easy for me to say no. But it was very hard for me to think back to that moment afterwards. It was brutal so i don't recommend that strategy to anybody that's not much of a transition so i don't i don't recommend that to anybody uh, uh so yeah so here here we have some folks and we have a really interesting mix because we have one member who is is working full time and also running his his you know kind of consulting uh, on the side we have uh, one member who left uh, somewhat recently and another member who left uh, the 95, the employee thing, uh, I think one and a half years ago, right? So, um, so all right, so let's go to that. And, and again, yeah, so you're gonna hear a lot more wisdom than I could ever impart to you. So let's, uh, uh, let me introduce the members to you. And yeah, maybe, maybe a good presenter would have this memorized. Well, I'll just read it off. That's okay, you guys. Oh, by the way, I should note that in the description of this video, you have links to websites and profiles for each of the guests today. So if you if you want to connect with them, you, you have that option right there. All right. So first up, we have Charles Elwood, Elwood uh, Business Intelligence Manager at National Bulk Equipment in Holland, Michigan, and founder of Solus Matica LLC. It's a Power BI business consulting company. You have to ask him when you talk like about how he came up with that name. It's a pretty interesting story. I'm going to share a little bit more about him. So he he shares in a way, um, a, a, you know, a, some something that I'm also passionate about, which is collecting stories. So I collect stories. I just get a, so much of a kick out of hearing people's Power BI journeys. But he does it for immigrants who move from their original country to their home in Holland, Michigan. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Maybe we'll do a session on that. Yeah. 
All right, and um, in in the other corner we have uh, Grace, founder of Light Dot Lab, and she's based in Singapore. Light Dot Labs Power BI training and consulting services help business users 10x their speed from data to insights. Uh, Grace is also a Power BI and Excel addict, aren't we all? <laughs> Maybe on this channel we are. <laughs> And uh, if it's okay to share, Grace, that I, I wanted to add something more about you. So you 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 have done long distance cycling trips. Is it fair to say that you like that? You enjoy that? Or I don't know. <laughs> the... uh, I I do enjoy that. Uh, right. <laughs> but I have a lot of long distance trips. Up, mm, not really. That was that one. That Taiwan. one. That I did. That right? one. But I will oh, add to boy. it. I will add to it. All right, perfect, great, sounds great. All right, and, and then we have Diego. He's an online instructor for Spanish-speaking audiences based in Monterrey, Mexico. Diego Designs and, oh, oops, where are my notes here? Designs and creates courses that teach people how to free up their time so that they can focus in meaningful work, delivering content that meets current industry needs. So. I've talked to Diego, and when he starts talking about the office worker, he always talks about such passion, and you, you can feel it. So uh, clearly, he must have gone through it himself as well, but he, he feels the angst, he feels the pain for that kind of office worker who's stuck doing repetitive tasks or menial tasks, yes. and that's his goal, to kind of free them up, show them a better way. And I think that's Power cool. BI fits really nicely into that picture, I must say. And Diego has 2,600 enrolled students in his courses. That That's that's crazy. <laughs> and he's always yes. learning something new. All right, folks, so that was their intro. Um, you know, folks, if I if I missed anything that you would want to add, go ahead and do that. All right, let me check in with the comments really quick. All right, so we have some other folks who are in the same boat. So again... Uh, 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 if you didn't pick it up already, Charles is is right now. He's a full time employee and running his business on the side. Grace left a few years back, and Diego uh, is recent transition, but he did take time to to do that transition. So we're going to learn all about that. But before we even talk about the transition, there was one thing that I that I feel is really important, which I want to talk about, which which is the motivation behind it. Because I feel that if you don't quite have that right, then you may not be able to carry yourself through this journey. So um, why don't you tell me about that? Uh, Grace, why don't we start with you? <laughs> uh, the motivation. Uh, I think it was this whole thing on like, you know, knowing that I'm doing well, um, knowing that I'm sort of getting it at the nine to five. But there's this sort of... Mm -hmm emptiness somewhere like is this it you know there's this question like is this it is it going to be like the trajectory for the rest of my life yeah. and there's something that just didn't, didn't sit right but the problem was i don't really know what's kind of wrong um i don't really know what's the problem and i think there was one day when i was in the shower and then there's just this statement that hit me it's like it feels like i've been consuming a lot i've just been consuming and consuming mm -hmm. and i haven't been producing yeah. Um, and the last time I remember producing was like, you know, creating, producing was in university. I created like a club, you know, started it from scratch. Um, I was involved in production, stuff like that. Um, but then once I started corporate work, it didn't, I didn't have that kind of uh, creation anymore. So I felt something was kind of missing and there's this like urge to want to build something. But the problem was I didn't really know what it was. I didn't yeah. even have the clarity at all. So yeah. um, for me, that that gnawing was enough to get me to do something about it, which is uh, why I took a sabbatical actually from work. Um, and I thought it was, you know, for me to sort of figure out what I was going to do next, you know, regarding maybe starting a business or something like that. Mm -hmm. Turns out it was a bigger detour. Mm -hmm. It became some sabbatical became something that focused on my personal being. Yeah. So it, it's sort of like, I thought it was just a career thing, but yeah. when I started unraveling it, it became very personal. Yeah. So in that, what happened was in that sabbatical, it became very about myself, my personal relationship with myself, with my yeah. parents, um, and just about life in general, right? So after wow. the sabbatical, uh, again, I did something that I don't quite recommend everyone to do, just like Avi, <laughs> right? Um, it's like, I kind of know this is not what I want, but I don't really know for sure what I really, really wanted to do. And But I just yeah. felt like I needed to just say, you know what, I think let's just 
you know, step away from it yeah. and then full time, like just go figure this out. Because the other thing I learned about myself is I'm like a hundred and zero kind of person, hundred or zero. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I'm at my nine to five, I'm like all into it, right? It's not even nine to five to me. It's like nine to nine, maybe weekends if I need to. Um, and there's like, there just isn't that brain space. So yeah. I didn't have that sort of like um, very clear idea of what problem I wanted to solve, yeah. right? So, so I struggled quite a lot in my first one and a half years trying to even like niche down on, you know, exactly what it was. I was like thinking, maybe let's do cycling tours, you know, in (laughs) Singapore, like in Taiwan, right? And then you're like, oh my God, it's like awesome. I could get away from like the desk. Wait, wait, wait. So you were thinking of doing that as a career. Is that that right? Yeah. Like, yeah, let's start a business and just do cycling tours, right? incredible. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, so on it. And then it's like, I I have have a feeling you probably would have captured the data and still graphed it all. It was, hey, look guys, you know, this is what our (laughs) trip looks like. (laughs) Yeah, but you know, I think what happens for first time entrepreneurs like myself, um, a lot of times there's like like reality and there's like the illusion, right? Mm. You have this like shiny rosy dream, it sounds so great and fluffy. Yeah. But when the rubber really hits the road, like you know, after you leave your job and you think you're gonna like do it without proper like data or proper like stuff in place without testing anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's you're gonna crash really bad um and and it will take some time yeah. um to sort of like build all that up and like find a way out and like you know and you watch your bank account going down you're like okay this is so screwed i should not have ever done that but <laughs> i don't know i think for me it's i guess if you ask me if i look back would i have done it any other way i don't know to be honest um <laughs> i think we all make the best decisions at yeah. any point in time of our life yeah and in some ways if i look at it the bright side it's the first time i've been so out of my comfort zone i've yeah. never been so out of my comfort zone ever yeah. so maybe it's sort of life's way to say I like know. you know what you've always figured out something you've always had like the the, the game laid out for you you know what yeah. let's see how you handle it if you have nothing so that's that's beautiful, yeah. that's beautiful. I, I, I don't i don't recommend it i don't recommend <laughs> it you know unless you have some savings yeah. you know to, to tide you over uh, and a very supportive like group of people around you uh but everyone has his, has his or her own path yeah Oh, but that's beautiful, man. So many thoughts crossed uh, across my head as you were talking. And, and of course, um, uh, so uh, these members are in a Pro Plus program, so we get to talk a lot. And, and I'm flashing back to all of our earlier conversations. The only thing that I would say is that it's odd that you took that journey yourself when you took that sabbatical. And in a way, it was thrust upon me when I was fired, laid off from my job at Washington Mutual. But I uh, started, I, I, and, and, and again, it didn't become just about a thing about finding a job. I'm not sure if it happens to everybody, but when I was like stri- stripped of the job, right? I mean, I didn't just lose my job it felt like I had lost my identity because that's what we identify with, right? I mean, oh, I'm a business analyst to Washington Mutual. That's who I am. And if you're not that, then who the F are you, right? So, all right, no, was, and, and the worst yeah. thing, the worst thing about it is, I, you know, I, some of us are like myself, I thought I'll be okay with that. You know, you think you're okay, that you think you can handle it, right? Yeah. Until you really go through and you really experience it and feel it. Yeah. You actually are totally not prepared for it yeah. at all. You know, I thought I'll be okay, but no, you feel like, you're like a worthless piece of shit that nobody cares about. <laughs> There's oh, like nothing to do Yeah, the thoughts that run <laughs> through your like, head. That's, yeah. that's terrific. All right, so <laughs> D- Diego, let's hear from you. So you had a little bit of different st- story. So tell tell us a little bit about your transition and the motivation behind it. What, what was the first spark? Walk us through that. All right, thanks, Javi. Um, yeah, my transition was a little bit different than Grace. Yeah. Thank, um, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, and even though it was like um, differ- a different type of transition, I still know that it's really difficult. Mm-hmm. My transition was something that was um, that's, um, that I wasn't looking for it, like to like actively looking for making the transition. To be real honest, like mm-hmm. to make yeah. that transition in, in a year or something like that. But um, I started making content. So, okay, let me start with the motivation. The motivation for me was that um, there is a lot of, a lot, a lot of content published in English. So if you know English, it's really, really I mean, it's easier to mm-hmm. find what they're looking for, to find what are the, 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 the latest developments in technologies and tools and, and alike, right, and ideas. So, uh, well, I, I have the, the, the advantage, the benefit that I know a, a little bit of English, but 
a lot of people that I know and that I um, work with and that I, I, I'm, I'm friends with and that I know, they don't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So in Spanish, when I try to look for things in Spanish, there isn't, there isn't a lot of content. So that was like my motivation because I was, I was able to learn to use and here specifically Power BI and, and to, to get the latest developments and technology that can be applied in a business setting in the off to the office workers to my job, what I was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. And to be able to get that knowledge and then um, take it to my native language, which is Spanish, yeah. it was like, uh, like, like a way that I could give back, right? Wow. To give back, back. So I started publishing content. And since there is a huge gap between what I was telling that the, the content published in, in English and other languages, not just Spanish, like a lot of people started looking to what I was uh, publishing, the content, the courses, and uh, and actually they started looking for me for con consultancy services. So when they, everything like the, uh, everything that I was doing started to um, fit to match, is when I decided it was like two weeks that I was like really thinking if I should make the transition from my job to my to my well to to be dedicated full percent uh, 100 percent to this mm -hmm. so so it was like two weeks that i was like really um having the thoughts i decided that i needed to do it so yeah. i i spoke with my boss we we were in a project but um we were on a transition between two phases of a project so it was like a, a real good time to make the transition mm -hmm. and yeah, like Grace is telling, it's it's a, a real, it's mentally tough. Mm -hmm. Like it's really, really, you think that you, you can do it, but yeah. I mean, you can do it, but it's just, you need to be aware of all the difficulties that it, it, is, it can happen, right? Like it can happen. Yeah. Yeah. And of, and of course, uh, I mean, it's just a thought flashed in my, in my head. Like, oh, what if you do it with friends? Which is, which is funny. I'm not saying you, you leave in droves with your whole team, but uh but of course, you know, kind of the something that we we run the Pro Plus group. So, Diego, how long was the ramp up? Give me a time span. It was more than a year, was it? Where you were building content and getting that presence and getting that going? How long was that period? It, it was a year. Like, it was a year. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like it was like around a year. Yeah. Uh, terrific. Terrific. Uh, that's great. I definitely have more questions for you, especially like. What was that conversation like with that manager? But uh, let me let me go to Charles. So Charles, uh, tell us about uh, tell us a little bit about kind of where you are in your journey right now, and tell us specifically about the motivation. So let's see. I'm I'm transitioning. So I'm I'm at my company now. Um, yeah. And you know, about six months ago, seven months ago, I was. Um, a, project management on the project management team and I started doing pivot charts and pivot tables and analyzing data out of Excel and uh, you know that I did really well at that um, the data looked really good um, and then I kind of transitioned they made me a, a business manager business intelligence manager yeah then I got two interns and started um, you know building up a department and uh, and and it was kind of cool you know if creating a job inside of a company is is quite yeah. um fun and interesting um and then you know i i just felt like power bi just gave me the superpower you know i was going into these meetings dragging and dropping measures in and you know giving <laughs> insights and people are like wow you know th th this is incredible and um you know i just felt like man this this is so powerful i I, I want to do this for other other yeah. companies too, and and I want to help. Um, I feel like th there's just yeah. so much I could do with this yeah. and make an impact in the world. Um, so I started a, a side business, um, a side hustle, and um, you know I, I'm it's it's difficult now because I think any time you start a side business and people within a company find out, there's kind of a sense of you know that person's being disloyal or will all this work on the outside impact, you know, the work inside. Um, and so what I've done is I've really focused on making sure yeah. outside work doesn't, doesn't impact the inside. And, and I have the results to show it. Yeah. Um, so I can go to my boss and his boss and say, Hey, you know, it, it, I am 
100% focus. You can see the results. You can see the reports. Yeah. And and the nice thing about Power BI is it it does have that value right away. You can mm -hmm. you can show the value. You can prove the, yeah. the impact. So yeah. so yeah. that's kind of where I am in my journey now. Um, that's, so, yeah. that's that's terrific. So actually, I I, I I guess I realized that I maybe made a mistake so charles man you you made me think something really differently so in 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 like my personal life i'm a huge i have this huge thing about oh not labeling people and all that stuff but now that i think about it these are labels too employee consultant and it's like who cares right i mean and and i made this whole session sound like guys this is the path you have to follow if you don't follow just stupid right i mean i, I don't know it just sounds silly to me now so if you cast those labels aside, forget employee, forget consultant, forget all of that, and forget that what you're supposed to do, like, oh, I'm supposed to be this, supposed to be that, right? Um, you can create your own life, right? And and you decide what that looks like. So, of course, now I'm thinking about professors who teach at university. They do that lifelong. They, they are very dedicated to it. They make a great impact. Do a lot of them have something going on on the side are they helping private ventures are they on boards of companies a lot of them are is that is that detracting them from their role well i don't think so because otherwise the model wouldn't have survived and clearly the, the world the university is recognized that that is a great asset right it's a, it's a great asset to have somebody who sits on the board at microsoft come in and teach a class right so 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 who knows? I mean, the, it's not like it's a, it's a, you're walking on a one-way road and saying, okay, cool, I'm here, and then I need to get there. You get to decide that. And, um, and, and yeah, so I'm, I'm really glad that you have focused on that, on working with your company and, 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 and figuring things out that, hey, let's make sure it both works. And, and I think you and I have had that discussion that we really feel that it can, it can kind of help them. Right. So, uh, but, but again, you got to be kind of careful about that. So, so terrific. Thanks uh, for sharing that. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, I'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll have you share that one. So I mentioned the, the, the story behind the name of the company, Solus Matica. Tell us a little bit about that. So I had my whole family. Um, I've got three boys and my wife and we, were, we spent weeks. I mean, this is the longest part of starting my business was <laughs> us as a family yeah. deciding on a logo and, and and the name right nice. so we finally and then i found out all the the english names the single words are all you know trademarked and used by other companies yeah. so i was like well i gotta go to another language so i was like oh, i like the sun rising you know and then yeah. i looked up latin and solace is is the sun so yeah. the sun rising in, in latin and i wanted a visual and then um manica i think is is matrix in a, a different language so i was like ah data matrix so i put two languages two words together and mashed them up <laughs> and finally got all four family members to say Good wow, <laughs> that is an achievement. Yeah. So, so the, the yeah the board was all on board with the perfect, name. perfect. <laughs> so, so, yeah, clearly, folks, uh, you know, mediation is also Charles' key skill. If you could get four of his family members to agree, so we might call call upon you for that. Um, so, uh, so, so, um, you know, I'm really glad we had that conversation. Like, put the labels aside. So let's let's stay in that mode for a little bit keep the labels aside and and there are some things that i feel that may help may help you regardless of whether you consider yourself an employee uh, you want to be a consultant you're midway through that doesn't matter where there are some things that can help you and 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 and, and you know so well i'll just i'll just uh, kind of share my part of the story which is I was starting to do things within Microsoft long before I even had the, the germ of the idea to leave and help others, where I was starting to train others. And um, I was I had done a few blogs, not that many, just guest blogs here and there. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I would train anybody I could get a hold of. A anybody who had a few minutes to spare, I would sit them down like, oh, you want to learn about Power BI? Anybody would ask a question, I'm like, oh yeah, let me teach you, let me show you. Um, have you? Did you kind of experience that maybe? Tell me a little bit about that and you know, wh whoever wants to go uh, first, that some things where you found yourself doing as you discovered Power BI, in maybe in the way of helping others. 
My, my journey when I was in the corporate world, back then, Power BI hasn't sort of had that kind of recognition it has today. Mm -hmm. When I left my job at the end of 2015, Power BI was just, you know, being really like on the stage. So back then, uh, it was more of like, you know, Excel, some VBA. Um, and really back then, in my last role, it was sort of like a consultant of sorts, but to internal stakeholders. Like mm -hmm. we were the, like the pricing and revenue <laughs> analysts yeah. in the firm. Yeah. Um, looking at all these stuff, right? So um, we were analyzing the company's numbers, but not just that, we were actually building models and tools to help other teams, you know, yeah. help them to understand the business better and get the trajectory. So yeah. that part really got me hooked on that, the, the whole sort of problem solving, you know, making complex stuff simple and yeah. building a tool for someone else to use. Yeah. Um, but then there's also the other part on knowledge transfer, you know, after you build the tool, you know, yeah, how do you yeah. sort of get people on board to use it, to maintain it? Um, or even 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 nothing like uh, modeling related. It could be just sharing uh -huh. business knowledge. Right? New people exactly. will come on board, people who are new to the team. And I, I got a lot of satisfaction out of that, you know, like seeing people yeah. get the business understand and then they take it, they take the understanding to the next level. So that was those Love kind it. of elements that sort of maybe got me thinking about, hey, you know, maybe I kind of enjoy enabling people, yeah. be it by building tools for them or by actually leveling up their understanding of things. Yeah, so that was yes. that. But Power BI, no, that was like completely not even there until I left. Yeah. Got it. That, that's really interesting. So uh, guys, I realize that's why we, ha we have these people here that my question was so rambling and off topic, but, but Grace put into words what I was trying to say. Uh, and, and, and I think there's something that you said, Grace, and, and maybe it didn't happen then, but I'm sure you see it now, which is not just about the reports and the data. I think there's a next level which you help them understand it, right? Help them kind of use it. So I'm sure you've, you've seen that too. So, uh, uh, so Diego or Charles, what about you guys? Did you, did you find yourself, uh, uh, so Charles, let me let me talk about you. Tell tell me a little bit about that transition where you go from a role totally not focused on BI to leading the BI effort in the company. How how does that happen? Uh, that that was tough. Uh, you had to um, create. But that how from did that scratch. come about? Yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. I I, I was managing a team and. Um, I was just going around and looking at different departments and the project management team is an interesting group because mm -hmm. they touch or yeah. they keep the status on, on all groups within the company. Um, but we weren't getting the statuses. We weren't having the data. We'd have to yeah. weed through emails and, and manually just pick out and find the data. And it was so unstructured. Yeah. Um, and I, and, and here's the key thing it was, you kept, seeing the same mistakes repeating mm. it's like one week you're like oh i thought we fixed that and then the next week it's like oh there it is again and then the following week you're like wow again over and over and over and i was like wow there's inefficiencies in the system and if we could just collect all this data and put it in one spot and then just say how many times does this issue come up um so so i just proposed it to um my my boss at the time and i said you know I, i'd like to take these spreadsheets that we email all over the place and just, you know, let me just compile the data and, and just let me look at the data and graph it and chart it. Um, and, and when I did that, it, it hmm. I was like, oh, here's the trends, you know, and then it just cascaded from there. I was like, well, let me look at this problem. Wow. And then how about this one and this one and this one. So it just grew from, from one simple spreadsheet into many. Beautiful. So uh, let me ask you, so these spreadsheets, they were not kind of all yours. You you were kind of reaching out and, and pulling stuff from maybe other PMs, other teams. And of course, as you moved on, you talked about next round, next round. Now you're starting to cast a wider net in the organization a little bit. Beautiful. I think I'm seeing a trend here. Let me go to Diego. So Diego, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, so of course, you know, you, you had this mission about you were... Um, uh, uh, you, you know, so you were teaching or uh, starting to create content in Spanish for a lot of this and, and putting that out there, which is awesome. But tell me a bit about what was going on kind of inside the company. Uh, t yeah, tell me a bit about that. All right, Avi. Um, yeah, well, I never, so I never hide this from my manager. Yeah. Like I was creating content. I was like really mm -hmm. um, open about it and he was perfectly fine. 
actually a lot what you were telling right now Abby, the 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 thing about working with in the company but also doing something else mm-hmm. out of the company was something that i really got to be to leverage inside my job because i was learning all of these things while creating the content like because i had to to do research and to structure it and to have the fundamentals and the basics for what we were working like with power bi yeah so this knowledge i was go- i was able to apply it to my work wow. so so he, he he didn't have a problem mm-hmm. with me creating this content yeah. i mean it wasn't like a, like like I, I had another boss or something like that like that he was my boss and i was just doing that on the outside of yeah. the company uh, always on the outside but since i was learning all of this i could apply so he never had like this like this inconvenient or he, he didn't have an issue with me like doing this type yeah. of this type of it's because i was able yeah. to leverage yeah and, and yeah so so was sorry uh, yeah okay so i was learning all of this and as you say Avia, again like the old world versus the new world right yeah. like was learning things that in, in power bi were really 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 easy to do <laughs> But I was struggling a lot to do it, or not not just me, like everyone that's working with. You, like, you hit just, roadblocks, right? Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you, you're going full speed and you're bam, you're like, oh shit, how do I figure this out? And then you spend maybe yeah. the next three hours, the next three days trying to figure that thing out. Uh, of course, yeah, that's yeah. what we try to solve that within a program. Well, that's great too. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. I just want to, add that to, to finish that. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so I, I was learning about this new type of work, like uh, ways to work. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like the data modeling and the yeah. connectors and all those things. And I was like speaking about those those things during lunch because I was really trapped into into Whoa. what I was Yeah. That I was speaking to my boss, like, hey, I just I just learned this and it's awesome because it allows you to do this and you're going to um, save oh a gosh. lot of time and no errors and things like that. So I was like, that's when I that's when I realized yeah. we were onto something. That I was wow. something with this tool, right? It's really, yeah. it's really different to work yeah, yeah, yeah. like old world against this world and the new world. So I was like really uh, trapped by it that I was speaking about it during lunch to my teammates. Beautiful, yeah. And that that's that's beyond lovely. And a few things there. So for one, folks. Uh, so Grace, you know, initially she talked about her motivation and and. And yeah, sometimes it's not crystal clear. I don't think the sky is part and a, you know, like a voice speaks to other, oh, thou shall do this. It doesn't ha- happen like that. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta respect what's going on inside. You gotta acknowledge that first. And often we don't. We're so focused in, you know, the next promotion or whatever that you don't respect what's going on inside. So if you feel a constant tug, it, it's saying something. And this is one of the key signs where you take your leisure time and you do what is supposed to be work, but it's not work because we love it so much. So I hear this all the time. So Diego is sitting down at lunch and he can't stop talking about Power BI. I said the same thing where somebody would ask me a question Power BI. I'm like, sit down. And, you know, we spend the next hour. Uh, and, and, of course, I've heard others where is, and one person, uh, well, Steve Ross, who moderates most of our YouTube sessions, he he talked so casually, like yes, Saturdays is the Power BI day for me. And I'm like, what? And like, yeah, Saturdays, I take on Saturdays and just spend it on Power BI, you know? So if you find doing your, uh, doing those things like that, then that's a sign. So on this topic, frankly, I don't even remember the question that I asked, but I think there is a common, there is a thread here. There's a thread here, which now that I'm connecting dots, I'm connecting dots to my own story and the story of Pam Baker whom, uh, you know, hopefully you guys know. I always talk about her. So she, she's she been featured on the YouTube channel as well. Go look up her video if you're watching online later. And her story, in her own words, is, hey, I was just an account for 15 years. And, and then she kind of became this worldwide celebrity inside Volvo. So that, my own story, Charles, Grace, and Diego's, is that somehow you 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 kind of go go a little wider. And in a way... It's it's not done. It's like a selfless thing where you're not doing it because you're like, oh, this is going to make me successful, something like that. You're doing it somehow because you're compelled, but it happens anyway, which is you start reaching out, right? So that's what happened to me. I was no longer just focused on my department. 
if I was running into Shanna from sales at the water cooler and she talked to me about something, I said, huh, well, let me, give me access to your data. Give me a spreadsheet. Let me see what I can do, right? And of course, we heard the same thing from Grace and Charles Diego. So, so folks, there's something there. And I always say that uh, you have you have more leeway in creating a life than you think. And in, 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 in your job, oftentimes, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So I, I wasn't checking with my boss. Like, hey, is it okay to work for Shannon on this? I was just doing it. And of course, the results were great. And I got kudos. And guess what? Because of that, my manager got huge kudos. Right? And he, he became the BI manager in that, in that case. right? So, so good things can happen. So there's something there. So if you find yourself being tugged in that direction and helping beyond your department, go for it. That's, that's a good sign. That's a good direction to move into. All right, cool. So I want to I want to ask a specific question, which which is a tricky one. Which is, it, it, so first of all, should you talk to your manager? When is the right time, and what the heck do you say to them? Uh, Diego, let's let's start with you. Um, now I know right. I know how you would answer the first question. Uh, so so yeah, what, what's your thoughts on that? Okay, so the first time that I, I spoke with my boss about this was May 2000, uh, the year before, 2018, right? Mm -hmm. So I just told him like really casually, wasn't like a big deal, yeah. like, hey, I'm doing this online. Yeah. And he was like, oh, great. And okay. then like, yeah, so, so I started like giving this type of comments, mm -hmm. like, hey, you can learn this and you can do this and like trying to, to see it because it was because it was it was it will be it will allow me to to work better right so that what that is the story that i was trying to 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 give because yeah. it was true so so that was the first time that i told up that i talk about the the what i was doing yeah and it was the first person to know in the office like um to avoid any conflicts and like that and as soon as he knew like Mm -hmm. um, I was able to speak it without with everyone. Actually, the a new intern that got into the into the team, well, he took my course when he was just like um, getting oh, wow. into the company to, and into the team. So, so we gave him access to the course, so he were was able to well to apply it to his job, right? Yeah. So it was like really casually. I didn't make like a big deal because it wasn't. Yeah. And forward for that. For for May 2000 this year 2019, uh, we were working right. So I was thinking about it, and then I took like uh, vacations, so I had more time to to think about what I was going to to do. And when I was really convinced, like uh, that's what I felt. It's when it's the first day that I got back to the job after vacations. Mm -hmm. So I told him like th that that conversation needed to be on the like in a private setting right because we had open offices yeah. so that's like we were speaking like everyone could hear and I, I thought that conversation should be like a, on a private setting and we went to the to uh to the to a room to a private room for for meetings yeah and yeah well i started <laughs> it was like a little bit abrupt yeah. because uh, uh like I was asking him to come to this room, right? So yeah. he was something important. Sure, yeah. yeah. And and I was I told him like, look, I'm going to tell you the last thing, the last thing that I'm, I want to tell you, and then we can start to build up to, to mm -hmm. the decision. Yeah. So I just told him that I was I was leaving the job. Like yeah. There there wasn't a lot of negotiation. Like I was really mm -hmm. really convinced that I should do that. Mm -hmm. And. And that, that's the first line that I told him. It was mm -hmm. a little bit about, and then we start building up. So he knew, yeah. he knew the, the, the story. He knew my, my students that I was spending my weekends and my afternoons doing this. Yeah. So it wasn't like something like he didn't completely expect it. Yeah. Like he knew. So, but but it was like that conversation was really like between he and me, and it was like a long conversation, like an hour long. Wow. And that was the yeah. That was the thing. As long as he he and he and me were the only ones that knew. Like yeah. I haven't spoken about that with anyone else. And then we we waited for a few days to speak it with the with the manager with his boss, mm -hmm. and then with the with the team, right? Yeah. And with 
um, human resources. So yeah, that was a thing. Yeah. It was like something in the beginning was really casual mm -hmm. because it was it was something uh, uh, like a yeah. side thing. Uh -huh. But then when I took the decision, well, it was like yeah, that's like, beautiful. Yeah. So um, <laughs> Diego, by, by the sound of it, uh, it, it sounds like you had. You had a good manager. Would you categorize him that way? Was he was he a good manager? Yeah. All right, cool. So yeah, <laughs> you know, so I don't think we have a we have a case of like nightmare manager. Maybe we'll make it up and and discuss that. What would you do if you had a nightmare manager? But but let me let me kind of recap just to make sure I kind of understood it. So initially, when you're starting out something like this, and Grace talked about that too, and of course Charles is kind of going through this as well. You don't really know what's going to happen. Who, who the heck knows, right? So I'm like, oh, I mean, am I? gonna do this in three months six months in a year maybe never who knows right or maybe the university model where you always at the university and being on a board or something like that. so who knows what's gonna happen next so initially as you were starting to kind of step in and just publish content create courses just let them know that hey i'm i'm doing this and you know uh, and 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 then i guess if they have concerns, they can raise it you can talk about that yep i'll keep it separate from my work hours and that sort of stuff uh, I think the uh, from what I remember from Microsoft policy, it wasn't like legally required because your time is your own time, but it's highly recommended that you know you, you discuss with the manager. So uh, policy wise, so so you let them know, and as things built up, obviously, I mean in your case, it was very evident that how much of what you were doing outside was helping inside. The story of your, uh, you know, one of the interns and the team taking a course that that's that's crazy, right? So, uh, that's pretty cool. And then the final discussion, you made the decision. Maybe that's one one question that I wasn't uh, planning to ask, but like, what what was what was that decision like? But maybe we'll table that for now. You walk in the meeting, and and I like how you did. And I'm thinking back, maybe I did the same way. So you said, hey, I'm gonna be leaving this job. You start there. But then you explain the reasoning. You you talk to him about it. Now, of course, in your case, it sounded like a lot of that, none of it was like a surprise to him, right? But but again, you kind of reiterated that, hey, I've been working on this and it's taking on and that's what I believe in, all of that, right? So did I did I kind of get that right? Yeah, that's that's completely okay. correct. All right, perfect. So so guys, if you have a good manager, <laughs> that's a blueprint. I think that, that blueprint is, is going to work. So uh, Grace, I'm curious. Uh, so for you, it was slightly different. You were on a sabbatical, and then you go through this whole journey, internal and external, traveling around. Uh, and and then what? Did you like email them? Say, hey, I'm not coming back, or or what happened there? <laughs> just, just curious. No, no. Um, I I kept them posted on my journey, uh, even through my sabbatical. I, um, so I actually am on good terms with my my ex boss as mm. well as the 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 HR director as well. So I, I do actually check in with them um, throughout my sabbatical. So uh, it wasn't a surprise to them that uh, mm. that I made my decision and I yeah. gave them a lot of heads up because uh, ideally when you finish your one year sabbatical, it's just come back and you know you yeah. have a conversation where you're going, stuff like that. Yeah. So for me, I gave them very early heads up, but just before, um, actually I didn't leave immediately as well. I went mm -hmm. back for just two months um, to actually oh. help, help, my, help my team because they okay. were in the midst of a transition there's like right. people leaving you know, new people in the team yeah. you know so it's sort of like you know let's enable this team let's get them up to speed be it business wise mm -hmm. or like all the data all the modeling all the history yeah um so it was like they you know, just go back two months and, and help them out so yeah. for them again no surprises um it's always been an engaged conversation throughout and they were really really supportive like they were wow. they've always been very supportive ever right from the start um even when i first brought up the sabbatical yeah. through the sabbatical and then having a conversation with them so i would say yeah. i was very lucky and and yeah boy, and it sounds like you're still on good terms with them right i mean yeah if, if you would see them walking yeah, from I, the other side I, of the yeah. street you wouldn't duck down into an alley or something right no no we, we still we still keep in touch a lot um also yeah. uh they my ex-company are also uh my, my customers right now great so like yeah. i've been giving a lot of trainings uh doing some consulting projects um for for the various teams there as well yeah 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 that's that's terrific so there's there's one thing i want to ask you is that uh you know, so a qu quick story, we lived in New York for three years, loved it, and we had a lot of friends there. And then we moved to the West Coast, LA, and then Seattle, and we always kept thinking about New York. And like, oh gosh, you know, New York is so nice, let's go back. So we planned a trip back to New York. We went there, I was like, hey, you're gonna see all our old friends, it's gonna be like old times, it's gonna be so fun. 
it wasn't quite like that. We had forgotten about the traffic. We're like, whoa, is it? Is it was it this bad when we were there? Couldn't have been. Well, it, it was. We just had forgotten, right? I mean, because you think back and you think back all the rosy stuff. And then our friends, man, they were all so busy. And I'm like, huh, is life that busy in New York? I guess it is, right? So, so I'm wondering when you went back for two months. I'm just curious, what was your state of mind? Were you going back like, hey, I'm going back? Or were you already hesitant? Or you went back and yeah, what 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 was kind of going inside inside of you? You know, like when you went in, were you decided already or you decided in the two months? Uh, no, I already decided before I went back. All right, like all I right. didn't want, you know, I, I didn't want to okay. be the kind of person that went back and then like yeah. said I'm like leaving in like two months, right? Um, oh. Also, it would have affected the placement. Like if I went back, I would have been placed in another team, not my not my old team. I would have to move uh, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so it was sort of like you know I'm leaving, but do you yeah. guys need help? Because I heard you know the recent oh, so events. Got it. So before yeah. you went back, so, that's a conversation you had. Like, hey, yeah, I'm leaving. Yeah, if yeah. you need help, I can yes. come in. Wow, yeah, that, exactly. That is really awesome. Exactly. Beautiful. That, it was yes. It was. Uh, I would say that two months was a very. I think it was the first time I felt very light. And I felt very energized, like every single minute that I'm there, I know wow. I'm helping someone. I'm making a difference for the team. You know, I, I'm contributing what I have, yeah. you know, for, for the, these, these people, right? So it's very invigorating. Yeah. And, and I didn't have to be in a lot of the meetings. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of like, you know, all those other stuff <laughs> that comes with the usual. So I could just focus, like, I really yeah. focus, you know, building all like, it's, you know, like Charles, you realize that there's a lot of data all over the place. There were things that we wanted to build like since a yeah. long time ago. And then we never had the time because you're firefighting. Yes. I had that time yeah. to sit down and clean up everything. Yeah. Right? Just put it all in that one space. You yeah. know you always need it. And you know, to, to like do all this and give it to them. And then Beautiful. to have like, you know, like creating like lesson plans and like putting them in a room for like two hours each time and like going through all the history and stuff like that. So that that was that was yeah, I was I was very engaged, I would say, during that time. Yeah. Uh, so you know, to me, it sounds like that was uh, those two months were really productive. And I think there is a lesson there for employers because we often, you know, like, I mean, I remember like my role in uh, Microsoft and I'm sure before that as well, they're defined so narrowly that, oh, you know, this person is in this group and it reports to this person and you get access to this data set. And if you remove those constraints, I think we, we become something else we, we have an opportunity to become something else so i think there's some a lot packed in there frankly I, I we wouldn't be able to unpack that but i'm gonna leave that thought with with the audience at least uh so so charles you've heard me talk yeah. about training learning and i often say that the person to teach you power bi isn't the, isn't the one sitting at the top of the pyramid it's somebody who is just a few steps ahead <laughs> because they just figured it out right now so you're the one who's kind of gone through this most recently. What would your advice be? Like, what would you say that, hey, if, if somebody else is, is thinking about this or about to go through this, uh, what would you say their approach should be? So I did a lot of thinking. I'm, I'm constantly learning. I love learning. Um, I took a class about how to learn. I think it's on um, one of the Coursera classes. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think, Avi, your philosophy, and I, I looked all over the web, but um, the 80-20 rule, you know, 20% uh, is what you need to get 80% of the results. And I researched your, your, you know, I went through the free courses and I was like, this is it. This is the 20%. And um, and then I watched your, your live shows and um, I went and found the starred items because those were actual applications of, of real data in real real places you know I, I yeah. wanted real data I didn't want the fake data so yeah. I wanted to learn fast with real actual problems mm -hmm. and so you're and you know the ultimate calendar I'm I'm reworking myself through that now going through your M steps yeah. so so for me I, that's what I chose to focus on um, I looked at all different ways of learning and all different websites but I was like you know I, I learned best this way I found that where it was and that was you know your foot program and that's my recommendation is everybody needs to find how they learn best mm -hmm. and find the 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 best way to get that information the 20 yeah. percent um and i really liked how you you know you you focused it for us um yeah. and i'm still watching i i 
made it a goal to watch your videos all three times yeah. each. So every time you watch yeah. them, you learn something new. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. But but there's the technical side, but there's this other side. Yeah. And you alluded to that too. And I'm sure that's a thread that binds all of us. It, it, yeah. You know, that this thing to help others, sometimes that feels yeah. like a, a, a burning thing inside me. Sometimes it feels like I can't contain it. Like if, if I was put yeah. in a situation where I couldn't help others, I would like implode or something. Does it right. does it feel like that? What it, that is that crazy? Is it is just us four crazy folks or what is it? Have you thought about that? I, I think I think it's human. I think, hmm. um, and I think it's scary to go out and to put yourself out there and to share. And there's always that, I think, imposter syndrome. Who am I to yeah. to help? To do I know this? But um, but th then you decide what you want to help people on. And you know, I I help kids now with STEM. I run first for robotics Lego leagues <laughs> for kids. Um, I volunteer at the museum, the Hall Museum, to hear people's yeah. stories because that. I think it helps people to to tell their story. You know, it's so deep yeah. and ingrained. You know, their journey to to another country. Yeah. I think that's so powerful. Um, I want to do that impact, help them. Um, I want to help people with companies with Power BI. Um, not not just one company, but I want to help everybody. You know, how do I impact yeah. so many people in such a positive way and and yeah. really you know make an impact? And, and it's an itch. Yeah. And I think at first when you you try, you're like. Ooh, this is scary. Um, do I really want to do this? But, yeah. but then I, I think it's like, you know, if I don't do it, who will? And, and I, I, I yeah, you no. know, this is something I want to do. I never want to look back and say, I never tried it. Exactly. So to me, I want to, I want to take this journey. I want to see it and I've already started it and I want to complete it. Yeah. Um, and I want to help and make an impact to as many people as I can. So, exactly. Yeah. So folks, let that be the driving force, not these labels of consultant employee. I think if you approach it from the different way. So as you were talking, I was thinking about this and, and I don't think I've ever brought up religion or anything close to that or politics on Talk Power BI, but I'm going to do it just for this instance. As you were talking, I was thinking back to, uh, you know, the, the, the religious and spiritual figures, right? So of course there's Jesus, but I would say I'm more familiar growing up in India with Buddha and, and, and they were touched by something and then they couldn't hold it in themselves. They had to spread it there. So it's, it's, it's weird. Am I comparing, uh, you know, kind of power with that, but it, it, I don't know. It just does feel like that. It feels like, you know, we've been touched by greatness. We've been touched by something which is, is kind of beyond our own realm. And I think that makes sense because Power BI, frankly, is it's not even conceivable for somebody who's stuck in that Excel file just cranking out those reports. They, they don't see it. I mean, frankly, that's one of the biggest troubles I have. How to talk to these people because it just seems like science fiction. And they're like, what? No, man, go away, right? So, but when you are touched with that, when you see that truth, you have to share it. So folks, uh, um, uh, you know, that that's a beautiful thought and, and Man, I wouldn't mind wrapping it up on that, but I'm, I'm kind of hungry and greedy and I'm seeing if there's something else that I can ask you folks. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's end it. Uh, let's, uh, the last question I want to ask is, is that uh, how does it work kind of financially? So of course, saving up is a good idea, um, but so I, I, I up and left where I, you know, so one day I was, they had my salary and Microsoft paycheck coming in every month and next day I didn't. And, and man, it was excruciating that the paycheck disappearing was hard, but I, I will say, so again, I say that nobody should do it. Maybe I should, um, caveat that clearly that has its advantages too. And, and Grace, when we were talking about this topic earlier, she talked about that. It's, it's, it's there's no right and wrong. She talked about trade-offs. So the plus of that one was that, I had burnt my boats. There was no way back. And I just dove right in. Right? I mean, I did everything that I could. Now, of course, I, I learned my lesson because my initial instinct was to just pour myself in, just work hard. But I realized that that is not what gets you there. So Charles talked about that, the 20%. You got to learn the 20%, figure that out. And of course, I got lucky to... Um, to end up with an entrepreneur's coach and, and they taught me like, Oh yeah, don't do that. You know, don't work 80 hours, just do this one thing. Right. So, uh, but that was, that was kind of one end of the spectrum. And I've heard other stories where they said that they replaced 100% of their income before they left. I was like, Oh cool. I was earning, you know, hundred K here and I'm now earning hundred K and then they left. 
uh, is there is there a right answer or how should people even think about it? And of course, for me, finance was something that I wasn't thinking about. But when after I quit, I wish I had. Uh, so how did how did finances come into play or, or, or uh, should come into play? Mm, my this this uh, coming from me, I would say um, if you don't have hard data of mm -hmm. actual revenue coming in yet, yeah, make sure you have savings, like from a financially responsible point of view, especially if you have got family kids to feed, right? Make sure you have that runway, and however much runway you think you need, mm. I would say two point five or three mm. times that. All right, especially if it's your first time running a business, first time writing, it's gonna take double yeah. the time triple the pain or the effort or whatever right so i would say from a financially um responsible way now yeah. um that is if you don't already have revenues running for you uh but that's it that i think there's something else um that's also like a resource and it's actually a currency so this this thing about um uh, a career capital so i was reading this book by cal newport right mm -hmm. um and he talks about you know be so good that they can't ignore you um and I think apart from building up this like financial thing, right, would be have you built up the, the, the soft capital resource, the career resource. So for example, like what uh, Diego has, right, he has spent like a year plus already mm -hmm. building out that not only is he earning already from some of the courses he has done, you know, yeah. but at the same time, it's content, it's content. So now, you know, people are talking about content marketing, right? So mm -hmm. that actually is that, 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 that social capital, that content yeah. capital. Look yeah. at, let's say, just look at Chandu, right? Chandu.org, the guy, mm -hmm. um, the Excel yeah. guru, the same thing as well. He was writing his blog, really, you mm -hmm. know, edit. And at that point of time, even when he left his full-time job, I mean, I was just reading it online. Um, he hasn't, I don't think he has got up to that kind of revenues you're seeing today. Right. But he was like, you know, I'm going to double down on like, you know, generating the content and then creating the kind of um, product with a certain price point that would yeah. then let him, you know, you know, yeah. actually then, then self-sustain. So I would say that, um, again, no right, no wrong. Depends where you are. If you are someone that needs more like certainty and stuff like that, start off with the content parts. That's how people get to find you as well. You know, mm -hmm. you, you do the content stuff, people Google, if they need help, they find you, put it out on your LinkedIn or your Facebook, you know, so people will come. So that's the part that I totally do not have. It's something I need to be working <laughs> on as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, stuff like that, I wish I knew when I was there. But even back then, it was a it was a non-starter because I wouldn't even know, I didn't even know what I wanted yeah. to do. Right. So if you already know the topic or that area that you're going into, you know, that's one way to build some capital apart from also having the financial pieces. That's great. Thanks. Uh, Diego, Charles, do, do you guys want to add something to that? What's what's your take on it? Yeah, uh, I would like to add, um, yeah, like, for example, it's, it, it was a great answer, Grace, but I would like to add, like, um, before you leave, you can have all these ideas that is going to work and that you have. <laughs> You have your business model, you have everything that's in the books, yeah. but you need to validate the idea. Like, make sure that you know, um, that would be my recommendation. Maybe it's not mm. the path for everyone because like everyone has different um, risk adverse adversity. Yeah. But like to, if you can validate that what you are thinking before you leave, it's going to give you the confidence. Yeah. When you speak about it, like when you make the decision, it's going to give you the confidence to take the step because it, it's going to be difficult. People are going to try to hold you back and and you need to be confident that you can do it. But hmm. just have like the MVP, yeah, right? Like the minimum viable product, yeah. like that that can give you something like oxygen to continue to continue developing and make something bigger, but yeah. based on something that you already know that can work, right? So that would be like my recommendation um, to do before like taking it because it's a lead and you just yeah. need to know what's uh, your risk adversity and to see if you can, if you can handle it, right? Yeah, that's beautiful. One last thought. Yeah. Um, so what I did too is I had to address my fears. I, I know a lot of people struggle with, with, you know, is it financial fear? Are you afraid of losing everything? Um, and, and I often now write, write those down. Yeah. And I was like, you know, if I do this, this is what I'm afraid of. This is why I don't want to do it. And I was like, 
And then I think about it. It's like, if this happens, is it really that bad? And it's like, yeah. you know, a lot of times they're like, no, it's, it's, a, it's our head. It's a yeah. mental, oh, mental man. game. So, so for me, you know, I, I had to assess my risk, how much lo- risk I could do it, but also address the fears that I had about all these risks, you know, and why, yeah. why I wasn't oh, ready to. Yeah. So that, that, thank you for saying that because now I'm thinking back and I've, I've mentioned in one, one of the talk bar vias when I was going through all that stuff, um, it wasn't that my business is going to be unsuccessful and I'm not going to earn. I just, I, shit, man, I'm tearing up saying that. But I saw, I would see my kids going hungry. And and again, I mean, I wish I had that advice then because if I would have written it down, I probably would have seen it, how freaking ridiculous it was. I mean, th- th- that was not the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario was, you know, I, I go back to Microsoft and get another job, you know, that that would have worked out. But again, that's not how uh, the mind worked. Yeah, you go in this vicious cycle and when these fears come up, they are they're gonna dis- disproportionate to what is going on. So in my head, yeah, I saw my kids going hungry, which sounds ridiculous. So uh, thanks for that tip, Charles. Uh, so folks, that was uh, terrific. I wanna thank everybody for their time. Uh, and of course, and, and especially to Grace. So Grace, what it's like 1 a.m. where you are right now? <laughs> yeah, it's 1, All right. it's 1 a.m. in All Singapore. Right. Terrific. So we, folks, we just we just had National Day today. Oh, great. <laughs> it's, our, awesome. it's our birthday. <laughs> All right, so folks, um, thank you so much for your time. So folks, if you are, if you enjoyed the session, then let us know what you felt. If you have specific comments for the speakers, write them in. If you liked something specific, write that in because we do go back and read all that feedback and that's going to decide whether we kind of keep doing that. Of course, uh, these folks kind of take their time out to come and share the journey and share whatever they've learned, their knowledge, their wisdom. Uh, So we want to make sure that it is helping you. So go ahead and write that in the comments. Uh, So Grace, Diego, Charles, thank you so much. And again, folks, you have the links in the description to connect with these amazing folks. So uh, go ahead and do that. All right. Uh, So we'll stay on for questions. Uh, But Diego, Grace, and Charles, thank you, my friends. Thank you, Avi. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. All right. Take care. Thank you. All right, folks. So, uh, boy, that was... Super incredible. I will say that it, it kind of churned up a lot of thoughts and feelings. It kind of took me back on my journey as well. And I'm still thinking about, you know, that that thread of uh, helping others. And I, and you know what, maybe maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll share a little bit of my journey. I'm just trying to put up, pull up my notes here. So, um, boy. So, so in my journey, when was this? So I, I left my job at Microsoft. <laughs> and, and of course, I had internally, I had been, you know, kind of teaching Power BI and I had been, uh, uh, you know, kind of helping others uh, for a while. And, and yeah, I just wanted to do more, a heck of a lot more. So that was kind of clear to me. And and the first year that I really started my own business and ran on my own was 2017. And 2017 was pretty exciting. I'll admit, financially, things weren't working. I would get into those vicious spirals where I would think my kids would go hungry and I would think back to my paycheck at Microsoft and, and, and that sounded so awesome. And like, oh my gosh, money showed up every month in the account. How crazy is that? And, and of course, I... Um, I was going through a lot of stuff and, and, and um, uh, what was the other thing? So I kept thinking like, how, when can I earn that much money? How, how can I earn that much money? Um, yeah, so that, that felt like a struggle, but at the same time, things, it was exhilarating to see that I could help people, that they would learn from me and I could teach them and, and they got results. So 2017 was, was good in that way. It's kind of validated that. And 2018, I thought that I'm going to kick it out of the park. I'm going to kick it out of the park. I'm like 2017, my first year, I figured it all out. And uh, I mean, that was the figuring out year, uh, right? The, you know, the four stages talk about uh, storming. 
uh, forming, storming, norming, performing, right? So something like that, right? So f first year I said was, you know, I figured out 2018 I'm gonna hit the part. It didn't work out like that. In fact, 2018 wasn't a very good year. <laughs> uh, financially, it was probably at par with 2017, maybe just a little bit better, but it, it was it was still hard. But why was it that way? Now, and of course, that's there's a reason that when 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 I work with people and I talk about this journey and 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 whatever your goals are, right? So of course, I I focus on people who want to become consultants, but it doesn't matter. You can substitute that with any goal. But what was the roadblock in 2018? The roadblock was actually me, and 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 so 2000 about September 2018, maybe October 2018. I. Um, I started looking for a mindset coach. <laughs> now, now I, I have, you know, I've, I've struggled with depressions and a depression in different phases of my life, uh, all, all this sort of stuff. So I, I was used to seeing a therapist and they're great. You know, my therapist, gosh, Amy Chilcote, she, she's an angel. She was really awesome and I give her a lot of credit for transformation in my life. Uh, mindset coaches are kind of, uh, yeah, uh, therapist, but but different, a little more. I really don't know how to describe it, but but yeah. They, so I said I'm gonna go find a mindset coach because things are not working, right? So and in my entrepreneurs group, they would talk about mindset all the time, and I was like, oh, I guess that's important. So let me go get some help, right? So so I I was. I was interviewing them, huh? This was me interviewing them, me seeing if they're if they're like, you know, cut it. And, and she said that, hey, I'm gonna, why don't we run like a mini session? I would just walk you through what I usually do. And I said, fine, right. Um, and so she, she, she's asking some questions and she's talking about my business and so forth. And I'm just giving all the answers and I would have done this, oh, YouTube channel this and course this and this, that. And she said, wait a minute. I see some guilt there and freaking out, I, I might cry. I just uh, warning ahead. So I see some guilt there. Now my first reaction was, Bullshit. I'm not hiding her. <laughs> like, what's she smoking? Like, where does she see guilt? I think that. And then I started crying. And then it all came, came tumbling out. Stuff that I didn't even know was there. Oh, guilt. Guilt. Man, overpowering guilt. <sighs> guilt of what I'd put my family through. <sighs> uh... Yeah, and, 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 and the thing was, it wasn't fair because my family was okay in spite of my these visions of my kids going hungry. Nobody was going hungry, right? I was I was feeding my kids, but still that guilt was overwhelming, right? So I felt guilty of, of I felt guilty of pursuing my dreams. I felt guilty that I was uh, doing something selfish because oh Avi has a dream, so the whole family has to endure this. That's the kind of baggage that I was dealing with. So again, right? I mean, if you have that stuff going on in your head, how can you succeed? You would not succeed. So I was my own worst enemy. So, you know, we talk about all of this. We talk about content marketing and this, that, and those are all valid. But folks, if you don't fix you, I think you're doomed for failure. So then we deconstructed with the help of my mindset coach exactly what was going on. So what had gone on was this. Since I was feeling guilty, terribly guilty, I felt like I had done something wrong. I wanted to fix it. I wanted to fix it right away, right? So I wanted to fix it. And, and of course, in my mind, it simply was, man, this has to work. I have to earn as much as I was earning in Microsoft. So what was I actually doing? I would try out a new business idea. I would do something new. Right, and I and I wanted it to work. Right, I wanted it to take me back to my Microsoft days uh, financially. And guess what? It wouldn't do this. It would do this. Right, but hey, it was the first time I tried something. Maybe this was okay. Maybe if I tried it again, it would go this, and this, and then this, and then this. Now, of course. When I think logically and I think about all the entrepreneurs journey I've heard of folks who you know stepped out and kind of started their own thing 
it often happened like that. You don't succeed at the first try. You, you don't always do, right? Now, even those that seem like overnight success, every single one of them, go study their stories. It's often, um, so I think uh, it's it's like a Picasso's tale where he drew something for somebody on a, on a paper napkin. And, and, you know, so somebody came to them at a dinner party and said, hey, can you sketch something for us? And, you know, he drew something on a paper napkin. And then they said, thank you, and started walking away. And he said, oh, you owe me whatever currency they use, right? So X hundred dollars. And the person was aghast, like, what are you talking about? It just took you two minutes to draw it. He said, no, it took me 20 years to draw it in two minutes, right? So overnight successes are rarely that. You don't know their story. It just looks like that. Media celebrates that. Oh, look, they just this one thing. It's never like that, right? So so often businesses, well, yeah, first time you might do this, you might do, and then you might do this, and then, you know, so of course, that's the plus thing about running your own business is that there's no ceiling. <laughs> I, I, I'll admit, guys, I mean, in, in US, all of my career, I've gotten bonuses and such, but all of my increments, whenever I got like a bump, it was always single digits and sometimes really low single digits. And of course, sometimes I was laid off or, you know, no increase, right? So it's like, oh, yeah, you get 3% raise. But business, you don't have that, right? So you can grow. But I was not letting me have that opportunity. Why? Because I was carrying around all this guilt. So when my business didn't, didn't it wasn't an immediate success, I got panicky. And I said, oh my gosh, it didn't work. It's not working. Oh, it's not working. Help me. Oh gosh, I'm so screwed. And and then I said, I moved on to the next idea and the next idea and the next idea. Never really investing myself in something. No wonder things were shitty. They were, they were really bad, right? So 2018, I was working much harder, not getting results and just in, in a panic, just going from one thing to the next. So of course that changed with this mindset coach. That's when... So end of 2018, I I announced the, what we now call the Pro Plus program. At that time, I didn't have a name for that. And and folks, I've gone all in. And did it work the first time? Well, again, I mean, I wanted to do this. It didn't do that. But guess what? We're back here doing it again. And you can bet you can bet your life on it, right? I would that hey. Next, next time, this time we're gonna do this, and the next time we're gonna do this, and the next time we're gonna do this. Whew. All right, so uh, that's a little bit of my story. All right, cool. So uh, let's see. Um, uh, so I know this transition is sometimes weird, but let's uh, let's see if you have any power react questions, anybody. So let's see what some of you guys are saying. So there were a lot of good comments. Uh, great story, Charles. Every company, twenty percent principal. They talked about that. They liked that. Oh, nightmare managers. We didn't get to talk about that. <laughs> okay, maybe next time. Yeah, nightmare managers is tricky. I say it's it's fair to fly under the radar if you have to. You know, my take, and again, it's going to be your choice. So, um, again, I'm Microsoft. I read the policy. It didn't it didn't require. I mean, my time is my time. As long as I'm not divulging any sensitive data or something like that, obviously that would be wrong. But Hey, if I choose to share my knowledge, just write something about Power BI or go help a client, that's on me. But of course, if you have a decent relationship with your manager, you should talk about it. But if it's a nightmare manager, I think you, I, I, I'll give you a pass for that. All right, so Gobin says he has a question. Oh, Sam is saying mindset coaches are leeches. Well, man, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you heard my story. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm thankful for her. Let's just say that. Um, yeah. Well. Um, yeah. Uh. <laughs> All right. So Paul has heard this story before. That's great. Mm, da, da, da. Best in session yet. Okay. Paul really liked it. Mm. So Shao was asking, do you, yes, uh, yes, mate, I always stay back for your private questions. So let's see, go in, go ahead and ask your question. Um, do we open it for, oh, you know what? I don't wanna ignore my friends on the phone. So we, we do have other members on the phone. And Steve, hey, good to have you on. So, um, so folks on the phone, if you have a question and, and uh, about this or anything else, Power BI, 
Uh, go ahead, go ahead and ask. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Divyang says hi, Mohan says hi, Amartin says hi. All right, um, so yeah, I go bin if, uh, uh, let, me, let me type it in, comment, uh, what is your question? And I'm, I'm kind of tempted to open the phone lines. Um oh oh do you wanna you wanna talk to me? Yeah, let's uh let's do that. Hooty. So folks if you go to talkpowerbi.com, you get a chance to dial in. Oops. What is that? Talk so if you go to talkpowerbi.com, you get to be in our insiders club, you get access to all our notes, all our files, all the good stuff, plus you get to dial in. So Gobind, I'm going to assume you've already done that, and that would take you to this link. So let me open that up. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, slicer overriding page filter. Okay, good. I have some context. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Let me let me see. All right. Ooh. All right, go in. Hi. Hello. Hello, my friend. Hey, uh, Hi. so before we get to your question, though, why don't okay. you tell us a bit about yourself? Hi. Uh, I also joined you in last call. I'm from India, Chandigarh. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Awesome. OK, so <laughs> that problem is solved now. Uh, I got some answers from forum, and uh, that is now I have another questions about Slicer. Yeah, I'm working uh, as as a data analyst and visualizer from last one year. Nice, uh, like I told you. Yeah. So. Uh, what does your company do? I forget if I'm asking again. Mm, yeah, my company do uh, event analysis, uh, live traffic on like conference exhibitors. Oh, how exciting! Mm -hmm. And this is for live events. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey. Um, oh. Um, all right. Terrific. So, uh, and this time you have a question, something about slicer overriding page filters? Yeah. Mm, okay. Well, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. So, so tell me a bit about that. And I don't know if you, if you want to share your screen, you can. If it's easy yes, to Yes, I can. Okay. Let me share my screen. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, there you go. And meanwhile, I'll uh, okay. I'll bring up my Power BI file just so I can use that for the if I show you something. Mm -hmm. Can you okay. see my screen now? E yes. So China, Germany, India, thirty thousand. Yep. All right. Okay. So here is uh, something I have data like this. I have created sample data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have I have a country listed like China, Germany, India, and USA population for all of them, right? Yeah. So my client wants that mm, to this is like total population of all the countries. Yeah. And they want to exclude like one of the country. I have excluded USA from this slicer from mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Got it. it. Okay. Now. Let me clear it. Hmm. Okay. So now, now we have this population for all the countries, but they want to me uh, add a different filter for like selected country like USA. They want in additional slicer, and when they click like this USA, it will show additional data, not only the USA, but including the USA, China, India, Germany, and USA. But if I don't select USA. Then ah, they, okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. Got it. So maybe the label should say, uh, mm -hmm. okay, got it, got it. Additional country. So it's it's like a mm -hmm. checkbox. 
You say if, I, if it's checked, yeah. then show USA. If it's not checked, then do not show USA. Uh, but uh, when yeah. I check USA, I also want these three countries listed yeah, yeah. under yeah. this license. Yeah. It, so when I yeah. applied, uh, do we have solution for this? Because I I couldn't find any solution because I when I applied page level filter, that yeah. reduced the data mm -hmm. for only three countries. Yeah. So when I apply page level filter, it also uh, remove data from this uh, column because yeah. this is the same column, yeah. uh, this column in yeah. both the yeah. slicer. Got it. Got it. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you make sure that you don't have my YouTube channel playing as well? Uh, yeah, I have stopped it. Uh, let me. Uh... Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. So it is me, stopped. Me... Okay. Perfect. Awesome. So let me, uh, let me share my screen if I can do the right screen mm -hmm. okay so and I'll try to recreate the problem on my end using let's just do countries as well so we'll do yeah. country and I'll make it a slicer and we're gonna show uh, sales by country okay Okay, let's see. Okay, now, um, so again, there might be a few ways to solve this. Um, okay. Yeah, hold on one second. So there might be a few different ways to solve it. Uh, I'll just show you one. Hopefully, I can make it work. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. But for one, I don't think that there is any way, any combination of, of slicer filter that would let you do what you're trying to do by default. So actually, there is one option is to, mm. to break the relationship uh, do not have the relationship. Now, obviously, that's going to have. Uh, so let's let's try it. So there's option A is um, option A is remove the relationship. That is that is that is possible, but of course, that's going to create some other challenges. <laughs> like in other cases, you do want the relationship to be respected. Okay. Mm, uh, do you want to use my screen uh, and take mouse control if that helps uh no i i will see what adventure works if that's okay <laughs> yeah okay. i feel at home in adventure works all right so um hey shaw i see you on i think there was some echo from your mic so i had to mute you but i'll come back to you so remove the relationship that's one option um let's try the other option keeping the relationship and i'll just try it out and we'll see if it works so uh, hold on one second so let's go back here and Oops. Oh, gosh. Oh. All right. Hmm. So uh, let's see. So what I'm going to do is let me think about it so if i have a disconnected slicer which just shows united states or not okay cool i think i'd work with that so i'll just so for for the use really this table i would have to remove this relationship which i'm hesitant to do so what i'm going to do is create another table and okay. it'll just be it'll just be usa so let me just create the table and then i'll make it work in dax so I uh, usually, I just, for something simple like this, I just hit enter data and he, I'm going to say, um, 
so additional country um right so and we'll say and i'll i'll just spell it out like we want to include usa so, okay um uh, additional country um, okay okay let's try that I'm just going to load it for now. It's loading as we speak. Mm All right, uh, cool, so that table is there. So I'm gonna make use of that. So additional country, now I'm gonna bring that in. And now this is separate from that one. Additional country, okay. I wanna make it a slicer. And and again, just, just to make it clear, so let's change the size. Okay, now of course this does nothing right now, but that's what I want to change right now. If I check it, uncheck it, doesn't matter, right? So what I'm going to do is write another measure here. Uh, modeling new measure. It's coming up, and I'll say uh, sales. Um, Sales. <laughs> I often get stuck on what to call them. Something. Uh, sales. Um, let's just uh, sales. Um, respect additional country. Now, of course, you wouldn't call this in 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 a real model. Right? You would call it something different. Maybe just sales. Maybe that would be sales or uh, something like that. Okay. So, but here. So the first thing that I want to detect is is that selected or not. So I'm going to build it step by step. And what I'm going to say is where. Uh, selected value. Let's just see. So, uh, do you only have one checkbox, include USA, or do you have a whole list of them? Like, oh, include USA, include Canada, include uh, Luxembourg, something like that. Yeah. Is this a list? Yeah, I have multiples. Ooh, I have multiples. You have multiples. Let's try it. Oh, wait. So, so if you're showing Australia, Canada, so are there some countries which are always shown, and there are some other countries which are only shown if they're selected? Is that the logic? Uh, actually, uh, when user selects a uh, tick box, for this might increase. Like, right? Currently, I have four additional countries that need to be selected. Currently, I have four only. Um, okay. Well, so, but what about the other countries that are in the list? They're always shown. Is it? Yeah, they are always signed. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So in our case, what we're going to do is just to make sure that we get your scenario, we're going to include, uh, let's say United States and Canada, right? So two which are either toggled on or off, right? They're included or not, but the other ones are always shown, right? So let's go back to our table and edit it. Um, so I'm going to edit queries and add include Canada. So I'm, I'm really glad we, we got there. So folks, if you have been listening to Human Talk Power BI, I have refined my idea of modeling with your help. And and one of the key things in modeling is assumptions. So I was making an assumption and would have built something based on that, but now of course we're gonna refine that assumption. So I'm gonna change it slightly differently. So I'm gonna go back to the source where I'd entered the data and I'm gonna add include Canada. Uh, Canada, maybe uh, USA. Oh, is it called USA in my data? It's called United States. Yeah. Okay, I think that's okay.
All right, so we have that one. And what I'm going to do is uh, maybe, OK, so let's go in here. Mm, 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 mm. So let me just try a new So both can be toggled on or off. Man, this is uh, this is tricky. Include mm -hmm. USA. If that, let me just try one, and then I'll come back and refine it to work for two. I think yeah, that would be slightly box, different. Can... Yeah. Okay. So, so what I say is sales respect additional country. So I'll say variable and I'm just going to test is uh, selected USA. Um, oh, interesting. Select USA equals selected value for additional country, additional country, oops, additional country, country. If this is equal to United States, And let me just, uh, so I'm just testing right now. So I'll just return this value. Selected USA. So I just want to see if it is selected or not. So I'm going to add this here. And I'm expecting false. And, and yeah, so it gave false, but then if I do check this box, then it should change to true, which it did. And if I go to Canada, then it should, it's false again. And of course, if somehow both are selected, why is it a uh, single selection only? Let me change mm -hmm. that single selection. Sing mm -hmm. I am not sure what's going on. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. So if both are selected, then uh, oh, 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 this is interesting. So if both are selected, it doesn't work. We'll, we'll come back and solve that. Let's say include USA is now uh, true. This is working, right? So we'll come back okay. here. So now we'll build upon the logic and we'll say um, okay. So boy, so what are we gonna do? I I feel we have to iterate country by country. I'm thinking, is there another way to do that? I have a feeling there is another way to do that. But for now, I'm just going to do the iteration. So okay. we'll say, um, turn, oh gosh, so if, if selected USA, if, um, if, it is selected, then calculate sales, uh, filter uh, country. Ooh, um, hmm. Oh, territories. Maybe it is just sales. Let's just try that. Mm -hmm. So if USA is selected, then show everybody. But if USA is not selected, oops. Uh, USA is not selected. then do something calculate then in this case show sales but territories country you say not United 
states. Now, of course, this is kind of hard coded. Um, so yeah. Not great, but we'll we'll come back and and see if we can do a smarter solution. Yeah. Is it working now? I should probably close this window. Hmm. Man, why didn't that work? So I expected it not to show this one. Let's look at the measure. Uh, I think you have included the old one measure of sales. That's why uh, it is including. Uh, oh, I, I think I reversed it. Yeah, so if. Oh, well, if selected US, uh, oh, okay, got it, got it. All right, so if I unselect USA, it should disappear. Oh, shoot, okay, a little more tweaking. Mm -hmm. So territories, countries, and Got that. Okay, let's try again. All right, great. So, so let's let's mm -hmm. see this measure in action. Yeah. So, obviously, you're not going to show both sales in this. So. So this guy, let's design it. Style minimal. Something else. Okay, gross. What am I looking for? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, let's just go with that. All right. So, so, uh, so in this one, these countries are always shown. But if I check include USA, then USA is shown. If I uncheck that. Is not shown right so yeah we got it working for one country now of course this so so uh, folks I have this idea of uh, three kinds of tables that I use by the way generally when I'm building measures I'm always using tables and matri matrices so the three kinds of tables that I use is one I call the working table then there is a reporting table and then there's a debug table um, so this was just a working table this is just for me to kind of align myself and see the data and so forth and that usually has little to do with how uh, I, I would finally present the data. So when I would finally present the data, I wouldn't have sales in there, but I just wanted to kind of see it there. Um, all right, cool. So uh, so Govind, I'm not gonna solve the next step for you right now. It'll probably take too mm -hmm. long. I'll stumble too much, but I would yeah. give you uh, give you some ideas that I can think of. So in, instead of being hard coded, uh, and, and you could hard code it this way. Mm -hmm. where you do a lot of checks like if this is selected then do this then do that and all that sort of stuff but i don't think that's the smart way to go instead okay. what you want to do is is take take this table and somehow um somehow apply that on there um i'm thinking what's the best way to do that so take this table and apply it on there. Mm. Oh gosh, what was the? Uh, uh, some, is there any way? Is there any way if you add another column in the same table with additional country only? We do have that. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm looking to use. But but which which function? Um, oh gosh. So. Let's go back to my notes. So, uh, so option B is kind of hard coding using if then else we did that. 
option C is uh, without hard coding. Uh, without hard coding, uh, handle a flexible list of uh, additional countries. It could have three, it could have four, it could have 40, right? So that's 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 what I want. Yeah. Uh, can handle three, uh, four, or 40 countries in this list, and it would still work. Uh, so that one, mm -hmm. um, I, I think either, oh, it's not, not cross-section, I think intersection or um, treat as. And I'll admit, I learned this from uh, one of our students, Eamon Kelly. I never used this function. Uh, treat as, let's uh, look at it, look it up. <laughs> Intersection, I know. So, so treat as is kind of a relationship without a relationship. And in the context that we were talking about yesterday with Eamon, I, I decided uh, against it. I said, I don't like it. I would rather have a real relationship. But yeah, so that's that's what it kind of does. So it basically says, take take these values. So in your case, you're going to say, take the values of the additional country and apply mm -hmm. it to territories country. And right, okay. some, something like that. Um, yeah, so you, you do something like that. Or, or the uh, other one which can also do that is, I think, intersection. It, it will have the same results. So let's try DAX intersection. So yeah, intersect this table with that table. So uh, one of those would work. And, and the idea is simple. You would have, imagine you have the, no, let's see, let me see. Imagine you have one table of all the countries, right? And mm -hmm. then in the other additional countries, there are some that are gonna be selected at any given point of time. Sometimes it's gonna be US, sometimes it's gonna be Canada, sometimes it's gonna be US or Canada, and and, and again, it could be 40 different countries. So you don't really care how many each one, you just say, give me the intersection, right? So if, if this, this additional country has whichever selected, give me, you know, apply those to my, to my main uh, country trade table. Did that work? Oops, uh, let's try that again. So this is your uh, uh, country table or really, territories in my case and in Regia works and this okay. one is your additional country so you would say I don't really care if one is selected two are selected or five out of those list of 40 are selected just just whichever ones are selected apply them to country territories and well if they are selected I want to show the results so that would be that uh, so so I think you would use this to sh to handle so I'll say use interaction, intersection, or treat as uh, to handle additional countries. And, and then at least in this line of thought, uh, the, uh, the other countries uh, um, you would uh, calculate separately. You would just use like sales or something like that. Yeah, so, so give give that a try all right okay okay all right. okay i will cool. try it awesome mate mm -hmm. great so folks that was that was a good question mm -hmm. let me check back in comments and shout i see you online let me just see um hmm. so kirill is saying why not just set up a slicer that allows individual selections or use control uh, could it be that simple? I don't know. Sometimes, yeah, I make it more complicated than it needs to be. I mean, the way mm -hmm. Gobind explained it, I I felt that that wouldn't work. Um, let me think about it again. So his requirement is that some countries are always shown and some other countries are only shown, which is when it's checked. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I feel like it, it's... Um, well, actually, I mean, there could be another solution, I guess, and maybe that's better. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, I would look. I would like to add something. Mm. Yeah. 
actually we are doing like for a single table right this calculation so sometimes i have a dashboard or report there have uh, there are we have multiple visuals some uh, like pies some tables and some trending charts yeah. everything that depends on the countries we have selected or not selected just yeah. like page filter so i have multiple uh, visuals that need to be reflected on the selection or yeah. not selection yeah so but, i think that but like that's we the have uh, default in power bi Right. I mean, if I change in selection, it's going to affect yeah. every single visual on here. So tell me yeah, more. Yeah. So uh, when I applied on page level filter uh, for like, uh, I don't want to see the United States data on overall page. Yeah. So when I click that, uh, that will uh, that will uh, remove the additional country column too, because that is the only column I am using for both the slices. Yeah. In my but, case, yeah, yeah, I lost data. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't do it that way. Like. And again, I mean, it, it yeah. is a solution. I don't know if it's going to work for you, but you know, what if the 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 selection control was shown as this, and and you said, hey, look, um, all countries are selected right now. If you don't want to see U.S., mm -hmm. uncheck that, and and U.S. is gone, right? And then your so simple formula sales sum of sales works. And, and and it's a lot more intuitive. You save yourself a lot of hard work. It just, uh, I, I don't know, right? So mm -hmm. uh, maybe I would give my users that, that look, everything is selected. If you don't want to see something, just unselect it. And that, Actually, that, uh, that feels yeah. more natural as well. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have replicated data in another way. This is a sample data. Actually, uh, my data is like in drop down. there are 50 or something like that that cannot be fitted on the limited space so i have drop down so user cannot yeah. see it is not user friendly if we yeah uh, give Got 50 it. or 60 names wow. on a, yeah this Got is it. something like that i have i have multiple filters that includes this filter as well so this Very filter interesting. Has, actually this is not a country filter i am using on real mm -hmm. uh, uh real file so yeah Got it. Got it. Let me let me see. So that would make sense. So what if I have? Uh, so if I say select all, and then I say United States. What does that do? Should did it work? Why isn't it searching? Canada. Huh. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, I think if the slicer UI was slightly different, maybe you could have made it work. Because now that I'm thinking about this, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure in Excel, this is a non-issue. You can select through the filter and just unselect one thing and, and say, yep, I don't want that. Mm, but here, I, I'm, I'm not sure what happened here. It's just not, let me try again. So if I say Canada, Oh, let's see. Man, I, 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 I really think that, so it's gonna be a choice for you. I really think that you can kind of make it work with the slicer. Would need some user education, but then again, you're possibly walking into a, 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 a lot of complexity with DAX. Not, and, and the thing about complexity is that I love keeping things simple. Most of my initial dashboards just have some encounters because complexity is a cost that you don't just pay once. You pay it for the rest of the lifetime of the model. Once you come to a decision point, which is a key step in data modeling, and you choose the complicated path due to whatever reason, again, that's just not just a cost that you're paying th at that point. At that point, of course, you would have to work to design these DAX measures, but you're going to pay this cost forever. Why? Because now the model is inherently more complex. What does that mean? That means that every time you're going to have to come back to this model to fix something, to debug something, to tweak something, when the customer says, oh, the data doesn't look right, aren't those your favorite words, right? <laughs> the data doesn't look right. <laughs> Go check. Then you're going to have to deal with the complexity every single time. And of course, you know, we forget, right? I mean, I don't remember what I did last month. So every time I step in, I'm like, oh, oh, that's what I've done, right? And, and of course, if, if it's not you, if it's somebody else that you transition this to, they have to deal with this complexity too, right? So so, so I, I think, let's go back to this one and let's try the simple 
model. So you said you have a drop down. Yeah. Right? So again, again, it's a choice. I'm not saying one is better, better, uh, better or worse, but let's just see how how this path will look like. And Kittle, by the way, mate, thank you, <laughs> thank you for you know kind of suggesting that. So so let's uh, let's go in here, and. Uh, so again, I'm not a huge fan of this. I mean, it's just so. Uh, so select all, right? So that that is maybe the default. That is how the report loads. So right now, all countries are being selected. And somebody says, "Oh, I don't want to see USA," and it's a long list. So, and 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 of course, if it's 50, man, 50 isn't that long a list. So if it's a drop down, maybe you can, you know, kind of make it a long drop down. Uh, and that way, when it expands, you know, they see all the options and just uncheck that. But let's say somehow that is not possible. Uh, then they go in the search, and and the search was a little iffy for me. They search for states, and and they just uncheck states, and boom, United States is gone, right? So so again, uh, it's not as easy. It requires a few more steps from them. But yeah, it's a trade for client, they need to be uh, educated for this. Yeah, and again, I mean, there might be something like maybe if it's a drop down, maybe make the drop down like really large, right? So obviously they're not going to see it unless they drop down. But once they drop down, fifty isn't a big list. Fifty would mostly fit on the screen. Uh, so and then they can just uncheck. So so again, I'll I'll let you choose. I mean, try the try the DAX one, or try this. Maybe show the client both options. Uh, but yeah, keep keep in mind what I said, right? I mean, once you take the complex path, you're paying that cost forever. <laughs> All right, not to scare you. <laughs> DAX is cool. I, I like writing uh, fun DAX. All right, mate, thank you so much. Uh, cool. So let's see. Do do do. Uh, Shao, are you still on? Did you have a yes. question for me? Hi. Yeah. Hi. How are you? Thank I'm you. Doing great. Yeah, why don't you, before we dive into your question, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Uh, so I'm a PhD student. Uh, I live in Washington, D.C. All right, nice. Uh, so can I share my screen to you so you can see it? I'm not sure where to uh, upload the file. Yeah, hey, uh, what is a PhD student uh, doing with Power BI? Uh, so I have, um, I'm doing a project on... Um, kind of like doing a prediction of how uh, each text duration impact for um, the whole um, construction side project. And then um, mm -hmm. if one task fall behind the deadline, how the impact is going to involve for the whole project. So I need to kind of know um, the duration from past projects um, mm. so I can have a more understanding of the behavior from each agents how they do the same yeah. how they do the same task like how long it takes for different um, agencies to do the same task then I can have a better understanding of the whole um, behavior yeah so um, I think um, the power BI was a really interesting tool to deal with this question so I've been diving into this a little bit but I'm very begin like a very beginner with this yeah. um, a lot of uh, times I'm not sure if this is the right approach or uh, efficient approach yeah. to do to solve the problem so I want to know um, what do you think um, great we'll, we'll take a look at what you have um, I'll say minus reactions yeah I don't know some something like this um uh, I'm just I'm just curious have you tried out any of the other options like have you dabbled with R or Python or something like that um no okay hey I haven't <laughs> this, either this, you know? <laughs> yeah this is the tool I, I found is like because I need a lot of like visualized um uh, analysis yes um for to present yes, yes for yes, people yes. to understand oh beautiful. um yeah, that's why I think like maybe Power BI is yes, more. Yes, I, I think uh, I think yeah, you're in you're in the right spot for that visual analysis. 
Um, I mean, I, I, I hear about R Python. My, uh, one of my close friends, he always jokes with me. He says, Avi, you can't call yourself an analyst un until you know R. <laughs> it's apparently the, like the de facto language, but you know, Hey, I, in spite of what he said, I have worked in all kinds of organizations as employee, as consultant, I've helped them. I've made real impact, not knowing anything about R and Python, right? And, and Power BI is an incredible tool. So visual analysis, that's great. Um, Construction. Oh, can I, actually, I, sorry. Yeah. I actually tried with Python pandas, but oh, okay. I feel like um, sometimes with Python pandas, um, the visualization is not as interesting as yeah. or as dynamic. Exactly. As, yeah. So, um, uh, can I ask you though that what's what's next for you? Are, are you gonna stay focused in the construction industry, or or that is just a project you're working on right now? Uh, that's just a project. I mean, transportation. <laughs> so I'm like, um, I might find a, a, a data analysis job on the on the transportation side, but I'm really interested in data analysis. So I want to dive into more tools that can help yeah. me. Yeah. 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 Uh, so the story that I mentioned, uh, Bam Baker. Uh, yeah, she she's a Volvo, and and she was very keen on transportation as well. Uh, so of course, and from Volvo's perspective, they were shipping. Uh, so I think she was in Volvo trucks. They were shipping these all over the country. So yeah, she was looking at like what's the cost and how to optimize and so forth. So um, anyway, that might be a good connection. So uh, yeah, let's uh, oh, that's sound cool. like um, yeah. So uh, you can watch her, find her on my channel if you are interested about a story I uh, it she's one of my inspirations and uh, yeah reach out to her on LinkedIn uh, transportation we might have other students around focus on transportation as well of course there's this uh, uh, other stuff like we have another student who's focused on kind of on inventory uh, logistics which is kind of the delivery part um, and, and I love all of that um, it's pretty cool so Let's have Great. you so try to try to find the, the green share screen button on on your um, side actually I'll, on Zoom. And hey, if the meeting drops off, oh shoot, did the meeting end? Hold on, let me restart it. I haven't paid for Zoom yet, <laughs> so we get the free version. Um, let's go talk RBI. All right, so Shao, if you're, oops, sorry, Shao, please rejoin. Oh, what is happening? All right, we're back, Kirby. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, click the green share, share screen button. Okay. And go from there. Okay, cool. So, all right, so we're looking at is your Bobby model. Just okay. want to make sure this is like sample data or something, right? Do you, yeah, uh, this okay. is example data. So, I have, so this is the, um, oh, demo data right here. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I messed up something. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay. Can you see it? Cool. Yep. Yep. Okay. So this is the main table. Um, it has Actually, the. Actually, do you do you mind uh, showing the relationship view? Uh, so by the way, folks watching YouTube, that's pretty much the default that I start with. Doesn't matter if I'm helping a student, uh, follower, or working with a real client. All right. Cool. So. Um. So I haven't built um. Other than this, because I need to use the date, I need to calculate the duration. So yeah. I need to uh, use the date. I cannot like link the yeah. a regular calendar with the holidays, so I can calculate the um, the working days. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, hold mm -hmm. on uh, one second. Do, do you mind? Uh, um, also, holidays calendar. Oh, okay, so it's not connected yet. Because but... I'm not sure if I need more table to. Okay, just good enough. You know that, that yeah. orients me. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of that and put it on the side in my notes. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing that I do, folks, quite often. I'm talking to a client. Um, I'm pretty much a compulsive note taker. So, <laughs> all right. Um, 
Great. Uh, so now let's uh, go ahead and, and show me what you were showing me. Okay. So the table here uh, have the location, the district where the um, project happened and um, the project type. So you have yeah. design type or, and construction type and the um, very unique uh, project name. And under each project name, you have this different yes. task names and um, each project can include different task name because mm -hmm. um, not all the tasks um, are involved in each project and um, the start and finish date is for uh, the specific task yes. and some of them don't have a finish date yet it means uh -huh. still going on yeah and I want to what I want to do is I want to be able to select um, so here, I want to be able to calculate the working, working day duration between any tasks. And uh, I want to know, for example, I want to know um, um, how I can compare it across different project types. Yeah. So for example, if I select um, tax 202, yeah. there's going to be several projects involved. Um, I wanted to know what is the time when 202 start or finished to another task, maybe mm -hmm. 203, when it start or finished. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that's happened. why the start date involved two parts. One is what exactly the task name is. And when it start or finish, so the time point I want to be able to select, um, it is start time or finish time. And then the end date also include two parts is um, what task it is and what do you want is uh, finish or start time. Uh, okay. And then yeah. I wanted to calculate the um, working day duration between those two time point. I'm a little bit confused. So I'm with you till you say select the task and let's give them names. G give me like what could give me like some sample name. What could 202 be? Um, I don't know, create project plans, just whatever comes to mind. W w give me a name of a task. Uh, like a real name, not a number. Uh, not, uh, okay, let me see. For example, that's Scopey. 202 for for example that's scoping okay so scoping so let's say scoping and of course scoping is going to happen in maybe all projects so when you filter it on scoping you will see that oh look for this project it's we got the uh, this is the duration for that project this is the duration and mm -hmm. then i just want to see that hey look when you're looking at scoping this is the how the variation goes from project to project this project took 20 days this project 10 days something like that and you can show that visually is that uh, what we're trying to do no no, no. i want to know the duration not for a specific task but the duration between tasks for example if 202 oh, is scoping okay, okay. Got it, got and it. 205 is uh construction I want to know the duration um, from scoping to um, construction got, got so the, uh, or between it. Got, got it, got it. So, so the kind of the gap yeah. between them. So you're going to Yeah, the gap when between did, it when did, or did, you know, included. I'm, I'm confused. So you know. if, if I hear it that way, I would say, cool, I'm going to find out when the finish time for scoping is. And let's say that's on January 1. And then I'll mm -hmm. see what is the start time for construction is. If it's January 3rd, then I'll say two days. Is that, am I thinking about it right? Uh, I, I, want, I want to explain all over. Yeah. Sorry for the confusing. So I want to know, for example, so the task have a, a beginning and finish time, right? Yeah. So um, I want to know dynamically, what is the time duration Mm -hmm. between different tasks, which is um, one task finished and the other tasks begin. That's what I was trying to say, I think. And, and also I want to know, also I want to know what is the time from begin and the begin of two tasks. 
Ah, okay. So I, I, I would say, yeah. yeah if, so if that's can, this that's can, this filter for. Oh, got it, got it, got it. To yeah. select so, the column of perfect. start time. Perfect. So, so there, there are two yeah. scenarios here. In one scenario, you're gonna uh, you're gonna uh, oh gosh, hold on. Oh yeah. Well, so scenario A is you're gonna say from uh, uh, task. Uh, let's call it uh, task um, A or one. Uh, let's call it task A. So mm -hmm. from task A, which in this case could be 202 scoping, from the finish of the that task A to mm -hmm. the start of task B. B, yeah. Right. That's one scenario. Yeah. Uh, finish of task A. Example scoping. So, folks, yeah, on YouTube, you can see that, you know, when I said I, I take lots of notes. So, uh, scenario A is finish of task A, example scoping, to start of task B. Great. Yeah. Or, yeah. or mix and match, or start uh, end of task A and end of task B. So, I, I want to uh, be able okay, to select. Or yeah. start of task A and start of task yeah, B. Yeah, I want to be able to Definitely. mix and match. Uh, okay, I, I got it. <laughs> that, <laughs> Sorry for the confusing. No, but I have a feeling the good news is that I think if we can solve one, we can solve all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, um, do you use, uh, I don't know, OneDrive, G Drive, Dropbox, or something like that? And would it be possible to share the sample file? through that? Uh, yes, yes. Awesome. Um, so if you I can have... upload it somewhere and then share via a link, that's, that's the easiest way and, and put that in there. Mm, I'll, I'll give some time to do that. Folks, I'll, I'll check in with you. Okay, no new comments on our thing. Um, yeah, so again, folks, if you if you have any questions, line them up. How's the time? Oh, we're doing good in time. Uh, unless the talk part yeah, goes for three hours or something, <laughs> it, it doesn't feel uh, uh, satisfying enough for me often, uh, but that's okay. So, uh, oops. Uh, so we'll let, let uh, Shao kind of think of that. Mm -hmm. I'm likely to, let me think about this problem meanwhile. So, Dot, dot task a task b start finish uh, yeah yeah i feel like i feel like i have something on that in my course as well let me see if i can hunt and find that so maybe here and there's no i should see oh sorry yeah, uh, let me know, Shao, when you when you have sent the link. Okay. Meanwhile, I'll try to fill the silence on YouTube, so don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so DAX, two to two, DAX, and real world examples. Oh, yeah, so so this, so what Shao is asking isn't kind of standard, but there is a, a standard pattern of start and end date. And, and usually it's just the span we're talking about. Like, you know, so it's in the same time. Like how long are tasks taking? Uh, but Shao has a different spin on it. Let's see. So for this one, just, you know, just uh, if you're curious, there are three solutions to it. Uh, let me see if I... Uh, so you can see here, or at least three solutions. There might be more. So there's one way to solve it with, with no relationship between the calendar table and the table with the start and end dates. And it could be anything. It could be Acclam employees, it could be ticket, how long the state open, tasks, whatever like that. Anything that has a start and a finish date or timestamp. So that's one option. The other option is uh, a, you, you activate the relationship, but this, this uses a little bit, little bit uh, advanced DAX. And, and then uh, I actually have forgotten what is this simple DAX. Uh, I like the sound of that. Let me just jump to that. Oh, perfect. Mm. Okay, charge. I will send you a little. Oh, got it. Yeah, so this was kind of a life, life to date. Anyway, for those uh, who are in the course, so this is part of a pro level membership, which covers kind of advanced content, advanced support. If you have access to that, you can go peek through that. So, again, not kind of Shao's 
solution, but uh, but it'll I get you started on that. Okay. Sorry, I copied the link um, through the chat box. Okay, let me. Uh, I yep, I think I got it. Yep, okay. perfect. Great. School Drive. And download. And I'll probably start sharing my screen. So, folks, uh, okay. whatever we come up with, <laughs> no guarantees, but uh, it, this and any other file we have created in the past in Talk Power BI and in the future, you can get that by going to talkpowerbi.com. Um, so, this is show and this is construction tasks uh, time span. All right, opening the file right now. So, Shao, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to start sharing my screen with you. To All right. Oh, where did the file go? Okay, it's opening, I guess. Hmm. Selected tasks. Okay, I got the file. So at any point, you would have two tasks selected is that right yes yes okay so um okay all right all right so let me think so i'm going to write that down as well so folks you've heard me talk about it uh, go check through the talk bar via notes on what modeling really is uh, a few of the things are scoping there is translation there is um <laughs> oh gosh i'm blanking out um, uh, assumptions and decision yeah. points. So, and, and maybe there are other things that I've learned, right? So scoping, it is uh, decision points, assumptions, translation. So when you're doing data modeling, you're always doing these things and more. So you might think there is the technical stuff, but I love the soft stuff as well. So we, what we just did was we took an assumption and the only thing about assumption is that you just gotta understand them, call them out, and that's gonna make you a better modeler because oftentimes we have implicit assumptions which we don't call out and then that gets us in, into trouble later on. So at any point, two tasks to be compared are selected. Now the question is though <laughs> that this is a slicer and it has selected two or two and hey uh shout uh can you make sure that you're not you know you don't have me playing on youtube oh i have to close it uh, right yeah, you can pause it or mute it either one yeah. okay oh yeah. sorry yeah no worries so uh so okay. shout I, I don't know if you realize this but the, the challenge is that it, it it doesn't let you select two tasks. As far as I can tell, in this setup, there is no possible way to select, say, two or two and two or five. Because yes, if you select that's why I'm here, wondering: should I yeah. like separate the table? Should I like yeah. copy, yes. give it a copy so I link to the start yeah. date to one table and end date to another table? Um, that is one option. So again, assumptions, options. Yeah. So so this we'll call it a decision point. Decision point, and we have one option oops let me just get rid of this. so so we have one option is uh create two tables tables that is one option that is valid that's going to work mm. um for that one i'm also wondering should i also um so i have for each table i have the start date and uh finish date yeah. Those two days, if I want to calculate the duration, I have to link both uh, columns to the calendar table. Um, I don't know. We wouldn't worry about that yet. 
Uh, okay. Right now, we're just trying to solve just a selection problem. Right now, there's okay. no way to select that. Yes. That's so one, we could create two tables or allow multi-select. I'm kind of tempted by that. Let's try with option B. Let's go there, right? So, and again, sometimes you, if you go wrong at a decision point, you have to just backtrack and uh, try the other option or think of new ones. So, so yeah. So, so again, I mean, um, I'm, I'm a little hesitant. Maybe it'll turn out that this is the most elegant and best solution. But right now, what I'm going to say is that what if it, you know, and again, the selection isn't going to be like this. The what the case that I'm proposing is that they would come in here and select in the same box. So let's say I want to compare these two. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. Feasible? Yeah, okay, cool. So we'll go with that. So now we have two selected, so we have solved that problem. Great, let's move on from there. Um, so let's see. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building like, um, like a detail table. Mm -hmm. So we had... Uh, Task, project, task, project, duration, start, finish. Okay, cool. So we have project, task, uh, project type. I'm going to ignore and then demo. And I'm going to add start and finish. And uh, oops. Okay, there we go. And I want to see the actual dates. So yeah, I'm just getting rid of the uh, the hierarchy. Usually, I turn it off. I, I have the date hierarchy in here. And I'm also going to format these just so it's a little more compact on the display. By the way, Shao, I will I'll say that I'm a <laughs> little bit jealous of. Uh, all the newbies and the young guns who who discover who are discovering Power BI so early in their career. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> do you realize who superstars are going to be? <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 awesome, you know. So I know. And I very uh, appreciate you taking like live calls for yeah. solving like people's questions because I've been yeah. asking on the community and I'm yes. not sure that's yes. a very efficient way for this complicated question. Yeah. So yeah, to tell you a little bit of my story. Uh, uh, oh gosh, where did they go? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I taught uh, Power BI kind of inside Microsoft, and then I was doing a lot of corporate uh, kind of training and consulting. I would go to folks for and train them for two days. But I found that to be not effective because I was teach them a whole lot of stuff in two days and then walk away. And then what I saw was this learning doing gap that you can go to mm -hmm, the best yeah. course in the world. You can have the best everything, right? Mm -hmm. But then you go start working with your own data and, and then you're kind of stuck. And and then what happens is you go out there looking for answers, kind of as you said, right? You're mm -hmm. looking for everything. And what I say is sometimes you find every answer, but the one you're looking for, right? So I mean, everybody's helpful. I, I love the Power BI community, but man, it's just that. So of course, I wanted to solve that. So I mean, really, right? I mean, everything that I've done uh, from my YouTube channel to the course that I've designed and everything else, it's it's about that. That hey, let's let's not just focus on learning, but doing as well. So cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, although <laughs> you know, hold the uh, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like now now the pressure is on. Like now, I better be able to help you. Otherwise, you know, I'm <laughs> and no pressure. <laughs> All right. So um, so oftentimes what I do is I simplify the problem. So I'm wondering. I don't need. Um. Gosh, interesting. So. So I actually, at this point, I'm, I'm kind of failing to understand. I, 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 I realize there's some nuance which I hadn't quite understood. So imagine if there were only two records. Oh, oh, I think I us well, see what's going on. So uh, maybe I'll simplify it for one, just so I can fit into my head, is mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll, I'll just focus on a single project. Is that, is that okay? Mm. So we'll solve it for one project, and then we'll say, "Hey, can we solve it for every every project?" Um, I think so. But eventually, I want to be able to. So, um, when I select the text, the start date and end date, I imagine it um, it's gonna be a group of uh, points. 
group of projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. group of points that which uh, each one stand for individual yeah. projects. Yeah. So uh, then you can do like kind of like a statistic analysis with it. Mm, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So let's. Yeah. Uh, so actually, I realized that there is a, a kind of a temporary assumption we took for now, which is um, uh, that from the different scenarios finish of task a start of task b start of task a mm -hmm. start of task b and of course mm -hmm. right other combinations right yeah uh, we are taking scenario a yeah so for yeah, now that, we just, that... yeah and and again if you can solve this then we can solve the rest yes yes so, yes and and we're doing another temporary assumption which is solving for one project and again the the, the theory is that if you can solve it for one project we can solve for all of them yeah, um, yeah. And again, that's sometimes not true, but that's okay. We'll, we'll solve yeah, that. Yeah, we can work on that. So the difficulty I've been encountered is, so when I select a task, is the uh, different values under one column. But when I select start or finish date, it's actually the selection between columns. Yeah, yeah. So let's, that's let's why see. I I'm not sure how to... Um, so I, I know like uh, if you want to select multiple tasks that you can finish with uh, within one slicer, but how about um, select after you select a certain tasks, how you can select start or finish column? Uh, yeah, but we're not solving for that now, right? So we have taken this assumption that if we can solve it for well, frankly, right? I mean, before we solve the more complicated problem, we got to solve the simple one. So in yeah. everything that I do For, in the whole course, I always talk yeah. about Lego blocks, right? So mm -hmm. you know, my first measure by default is always sum and count rows. And it's mm -hmm. incredible how much you can do, how rich a, a picture you oh, can paint with okay. just that. So every, okay. anytime I'm working with a client, right? I mean, that would be my goal. That mm -hmm. I would take like, and of course, in, in finance, it's like some of sales, right? So that's easy. But in, in most other scenarios, you can still find something really simple. And I would just slice and dice in a different way. Like, oh, look, this oh, is sales by quarter, okay. right? So that would be the first thing that I would build for my client and then go from there, right? So, okay, so I think I, that makes sense. Yeah, so I realized that this is uh, something that we need to solve, but not just yet. Because frankly, if you mm -hmm. can't solve this, then we have no hope of solving for all three, right? So, mm -hmm. just, you know, yeah. So, so Lego blocks, we'll just go kind of step by step. Yeah. So for now, we'll just, we're not worried about that. We're just saying, hey, so so guys, folks, you, you're thinking how, you, so folks on YouTube, you, you see how I'm kind of operating this. And, and, and uh, frankly, <laughs> this has happened before, but I've failed to solve something. But I've been told by kind folks like all of you, who said, hey, Abby, it still helped me. Because you see the process. And, and I always say that, Man, I'm, I'm far from the smartest person in DAX. As I said, the treat as function, my student, Eamon Kelly, brought it up yesterday and I said, uh, uh, I looked up the reference, and I, oh, okay, that's what treat as is, right? So, uh, but I do think that all you have to do is take a complex problem and break it into simple pieces. That's, I every time you've seen me solve something, I always do that. Bring the simple pieces till I can solve the simple piece, till it's simple enough that I say, ah, oh, I can do that, right? All right, so uh, so we have a few uh, assumptions, temporary assumptions, to to simplify it. So so right now, all we're focused on is that the user has selected two or two and two or five, good, and we are focused on a single project, right? And and, mm -hmm. and again, our assumption was the finish of task A, and start of task B, right? So so I like this. You know, I'm frankly feeling good right now because I can wrap my head around this. Why? Because I can visually see it, right? So uh, so another thing that I say is uh, human learning comes before machine learning. Machine in this case is uh, uh, Power BI, right? So before I can solve it in DAX, before I can teach Power BI to do it, I first need to figure out. And this one, again, I'm feeling happy because I can see it. So given the way the assumptions we made, I, I just know that I need to get this uh, so we're doing, oh wait, I forgot what we're doing. What, what are we doing? Uh, finish of task A to start of task B, right? So that's what mm -hmm. we're doing. But again, it doesn't matter because I can later it change that. Matter. Yeah. So so finish uh, so from this to this. Um, yeah. So when I said I take notes, I also love taking annotated notes and dang it, I think my start application is not running. I'll show that uh, when we come back. Let's see if I can do this in paint. 
Okay, so put that the uh, paint. Oh shoot! Didn't want that. The other paint. Okay, there we go. Um, so sometimes when I'm doing this, I feel uh, <laughs> I feel a little anxious because I feel like. I'm, I, I go so slow that the person I'm solving for will like already see the answer. If that happens, just uh, bear with me, Shao. But um, all right, so. <laughs> I've been working on this for the whole week. <laughs> yeah, so, but again, I mean, you, you see my approach. So again, even if I don't solve it, you, you hopefully learn. Like I, yeah, I go yeah. really slow. So I, I say, I'm helpful. going to do, do, uh, let's do orange. Oops, so let's try. Oops. So I want the finish of this and I want the start of this. Great. Oh man. Oh, oops. What did I do? Start of this. Perfect. And I want to take this one. Uh, there we go. And stick that in my notes. All right. And I'm going to keep it on the side. Dual monitors help a whole lot. <laughs> and we'll see. Okay, cool. So we got that. Okay, so I'll admit that at the decision point, we we said in, instead of two tables, we did a single table. And again, it's about trade-offs. So I realized that we made our life a little bit tricky, but I think we're okay. So uh, let's just uh, work with it. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, create a folder for my measures. I often do that, so I'm just going to pay, pay with me on that. So enter data and I'm going to call it formulas, formulas, and that's it. Code. Okay. Okay. Got it. We're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this table and I want it to oh, copy, paste it. Okay, move it over there. Get back to this guy. Move it over there. Okay, we got this. So, so for this here, I want something different. I want formulas, and let me just add. Oops. Okay. All right. So let's add. Let's add, uh, boy. So let me let me see if I can think. So I'm gonna look back at this again. So we just need this one and that one. This one and that one. Let me focus on this one first. Five one two thousand eighteen. So let me first figure out the task name. So what is the first task name? So in your real data set. I'm hoping slash assuming, maybe we should call out that assumption, that you also have a, a name, but also an ID. And I would assume that the lower ID means that the task happens first. Right? So, yes. Okay. So it does. Uh, it does have so, a order. Uh, so task A is, I'll say, let's just say min, min of uh, task name. And of course, in your real data, if you do have a task name and a task ID or task order, uh, you wouldn't do it on the text field, you would do it on that other field. Uh, okay, so task A. Can you see that again? It's just a min, min of that. 
So uh, no, can you see that again? It, w what should I do? What is a separate photo? Well, photo? so your column is called task name, but it has numbers inside, right? Yes. I'm assuming in your real data set, you have one column which has real names like scoping, mm -hmm. and then it has IDs. They are they are together. Orders. Should I separate them? You would need separate to. Them? Well, okay. you I don't know if if the number is before the text, then you might be okay. Um, uh, yeah. It's before the text. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it, then it, then I think it will work. Okay. Cool. Okay. So so min and I just want to see how that does. Okay. Cool. So that is showing task A. That's awesome. Um, so I got the first task. I know what the first. Oh, oh, okay, got it. So uh, task A I know is 202, right? So before before I could figure this out, I needed to figure this one out. So now I have that, 202. Now let's see mm -hmm. if we can figure this out, figure out the finish. So mm -hmm. I know what task A is, but what is the finish for task A? Um, let's try that. Finish for task A is what is going to be calculate. So I just want um, a selected value of uh, finish, right? And and if I just do this, so let's do let's just do just selected value. And I'm expecting it's going to show blank. And we'll see in a second. So I'm going to add this to here. And again, I'm expecting blank. And it is blank. Why? Because selected value only returns something if there is one value. Right now, there are actually two values. There is the when when you just look for finish, uh, both of these selected, so it has these two, right? So mm -hmm. um, actually, I realized that instead of the minimum task, we could have just said give us the minimum this minimum finish time possibly but but again I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna just stay with it so so uh, so now I just want to say is no 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 I only want selected value for the task a which I've already figured out so I'm gonna say mm, actually let's do this so I'm gonna use a variable variable uh, selected task equals task a and then I want to return selected value where, oops, uh, selected value calculate where, um, oh gosh, the demo task name equals selected task. So again, selected task is going to say task A. All right, let's let's just see if it works, um, and then. So finish for task A. I'm expecting five in 2018. Oh, perfect, bingo. So that did work. Uh, date time, just do this. All right, so I got that. And then I'm gonna repeat that for task B. So new measure. Okay, there we go. So for task B, I'll say max of this. And again, I'll test it. I'm expecting 205 to be returned, but I'll test it once it's done. Okay, perfect. So so far it's working great, and you know what? I'm gonna I might change the display to a multi-row card. Mm, I like it, but background maybe. Okay, um, gosh, size. <laughs> oh, you know what? I wonder, I wonder if I can do use matrix. Okay, 
was so close. And oh, man. Oh, showing Rose, yeah, there we go. Sure. Ah, perfect. Whew. That makes a lot more sense. Text size. Okay, great. So we got task A, 202, finish with task A, task B. And now, of course, we copy the this one and change it to get us the, the second, uh, second one, start of task B. So we go in here and start for task B, I guess, task B. And then we're going to change selective task to be task B. And then uh, we don't want the finish, we want the start. So I'm expecting uh, 6 1 2018, right? So just as we had done it over here, I'm expecting this one. Uh, let's see if it works. Start of task B. It is 6 1. Great. So, folks who have gone through, uh, by, by the way, <laughs> I should have said it at the beginning. So, folks watching on YouTube, um, where is my. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, so a lot of people they like they join this for the first time and then they they like never come back <laughs> because like they this is way beyond. So if you're getting started, we dive into whatever question comes up. But if you're just getting started, uh, if you go to my channel, right up top is the is a one hour tutorial. That's a great way to get started, right? So this one is there, but. Those who have gone through that and those who have gone through my course, again, talk about the Lego blocks that I had mentioned earlier and and, and how it, it, that's how I build. So, so, so far, we have built these small Lego blocks. And if you think about it, and each one wasn't that complicated, right? So, uh, Shao, now that we have this, to get your answer, what would you do? To get the answer, like, well, so how long does it take from... Uh, from the finish of this to that one, what would you do? What would be your next measure that you would write? Didn't mean to trip you up. Hello? Yeah. Uh, so I will, I think this table needs to link back to the calendar table. So um, I can map those. Oh, shoot. Okay, sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> I probably should pay for Zoom. <laughs> uh, it times me out in, in, in 40 minutes. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Mm, top part of the eye. All right, we're gonna wait for Shao. <laughs> poo, 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 poo. All right, uh, comment by Prashant. Is it possible to do a self-join in the task table to resolve the question the lady had? Mm, interesting, self-join. Um, 
Hmm. Maybe. Hey, Shao, are you back? Are we back? Sorry. Sorry about losing you there. I, I see you on. Let's make sure your mic is working. And video. Can 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 you hear me on um, on um, on Zoom? On the conference line. Let me see. Can you hear me? So, folks, if you have other questions that you would uh, want to ask me, kind of over the phone, then uh, uh, then yeah, just uh, if you join through talkbarvi.com, that's the way to dial in. And of course, uh, students in my program they're on the call from the get go, from the beginning. Uh, that's how we roll. Oh boy! So oh oh, I think she's rejoining. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause for this. All right, yay, she's back on. And why isn't my video showing? Oh, there is that. That's me. Video. Ooh, oh dang it! All right, Shao. So boy, did we lose audio from you? Oh, what we know. Oh man. Well, all right. Uh, yeah. So she's having audio issues. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna wait for her. So. Um, let's look at Prashant's comment. Is it possible to do a self-join? Well, um, so self-joins are definitely doable in SQL. You can do that in, I think, Query Editor as well. But those would be static solutions. It seems she needs like a dynamic case where you select different tasks. I should have probably, of course, if it was a real client, I would have asked them more about the scenario because it is a, a little bit unusual, right? I mean, like, do you really need to see it that way? Maybe they do. Uh, usually, this is not like the first thing when I'm looking at tasks and all that stuff. I would, um, I would just look at. You know, so it's not the first thing that I would build, but maybe, of course, uh, she's going for like a really specific analysis. Uh, shall we ask? So I don't know what happened. We are can't. You, you know what? What if you try to? Is there a dial by phone? I think there is. Hold on. I I'm, I'm back. Oh yeah, yeah, awesome. Oh, cool. <laughs> Whew, thank God. All right, so uh, so let me let me back up a little bit. Uh, so can you can you see my screen? Yeah. Oh man, is your is your audio cutting out? I just heard you a second ago. Hmm. Let me see. If you're having trouble here, uh, do I? Where is the dial-in link? Like you can try. You can try. You can try dialing in from your phone. Let me find that. All right. Do we have you Hi, back I'm back. Audio? Sorry. Okay. All right. I'm back. not sure what happened. Okay, cool. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, cool. So let me ask the same question another way. Like, forget about Power BI. If you were looking at this and I said, hmm, so how long does it take? from the finish of task A to the start of task B. What would you say? What would you do? Again, just as a human, forget Power BI for now. Oh man, lose our audio again, hold on. <laughs> uh, let me see. Okay. 
All right, man, the audio is, I know, acting up. Um, so we have you on. Were you able to hear me? Does audio, like, does my audio cut out as well when? Okay, okay. Um, all right, so uh, last try, let's try. Is there a dial in for this? Dim time. All right. Hello. I'm so sorry. It's cutting me out. I don't know why. Okay. Hopefully it stays. Let's see. Are you still on? It seems to cut you off after your first sentence. Oh boy. Um, okay, so shall we gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna talk from my side, I guess. Um, to um, just, uh, I mean, it's gonna be recorded so you can go back and get it too. All right, so folks, uh, so it, it was, I, I didn't expect, I didn't expect what just happened, not, not the Zoom problem, but when I asked her that what would you do uh, Shao went to the calendar table. That was like totally unexpected. That totally threw me off. Like, um, well, because again, I mean, you know, I think we need to kind of think like humans before we think like Power BI. So for a human, <laughs> this is trivial, right? I mean, you show this to a human, like, uh, I'm like, and I'll be like, seriously, you, that's what you're struggling with? It took you a month, dude. It took you a month from finish for task A to pass B. But then you break it down. How do we do it? Well, I just subtracted this from this. That's it. So uh, that's all we have to do. So I'm gonna create a new measure and you see the this idea of Lego blocks that I talked about, how, how this is working. So all of my Lego blocks are built. So if I wanna figure out how long it took from finish of task A to st or start of task B, I'll say time elapsed equals um, start of task B minus finish of task A. That's it. That's it, right? And let's add that measure on there. Time. Elapsed. Hi, hi, I'm back. All right, cool. Hopefully it stays Bye. that way. Yeah. So um, I didn't use the, the direct minus between those two because I wanted to know the working date. So that's why I have the calendar ah, okay. incorporated no, in. Cool. You know, so that's yeah. the thing about assumptions. Oh shoot, why is it date and time? I don't wanna, how do I convert it to a number? Um, date and time. Um, uh, how do I change this to a number? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so I'm gonna go back and call that out as an assumption, which I didn't even realize that we took, right? So to simplify it, we had another temporary assumption. Assumption. We are not going to worry about working days yet. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, I'm gonna come back to each one of those temporary assumptions, but for now, um, besides not being able to format it as as a, as a number, like I wanted to show 30 days or something. <laughs> do you know how to do that? I, I don't know. What a data category I should maybe format, convert number, maybe times one. What if I, I'm, I'm sure there's like a smart way to do it. Let's try this. Yes, yes, okay, so so cool. So would you say that we have solved this in, in this set of constraints and assumptions, right? So, uh, and let's just kind of test it out. So once I'm at this point, I, I do, other, so I would say, what about 202 uh, two and 206? Let's see if that works, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, damn, that, that wasn't in the same project. Uh, oh, that was, yeah, so now it's doing a different set of dates 
Mm -hmm. And let's see, 5, 1 to 5, 29 is 28. Bingo, right? So within this constraint, we have solved it, right? So, yeah. but, but you saw yeah. how even to solve this, we built a few Lego blocks. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, this, is, this is the classic way of doing it. And that's how I tend to do it. Now, you don't necessarily have to do it this way with these small Lego blocks as separate measures. Instead of that, you can build these as variables inside one big formula, right? So instead of, you know, task be having a separate thing, you can have that formula right there in the variable, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's one approach. The trade-off is that in this Lego block approach, I can put all these elements and see them. And it's, mm -hmm. it's easier for me to understand and debug. So I still often operate this way. Once mm -hmm. I have solved it, then I can go back and, and collapse all of these like all of these into this one as variables, right? So that's that's a choice, right? Um, that's the way I approach it. So uh, so we're gonna kind of kind of stop here, but I'll give you pointers on the rest of the journey because clearly mm -hmm. we need to unravel or, or go back and at least the temporary assumptions. So this one is easy, and this one you already guessed. So I I, I now realize what you were talking about. So this one, um, yes, you would uh, use the calendar table. And mm -hmm. there wouldn't be any relationships, no relationships, mm -hmm. because we, it's just not gonna work, right? I mean, mm -hmm. what are you gonna relate it to, right? So what you're gonna do instead is use the dates between function, mm -hmm. and uh, you would say basically date A to date B, and that would give you the time span. And of course, you know both dates, right? So this is your date A, this is your date B. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so that is, uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, let me color it in like green or something, right? So uh, next steps, right? So uh, next steps. Okay, let's talk about. I'm trying to look for a sim simpler one. Um, ah, this is this is not that bad. So, but now I want to I want to I want this to be flexible, where I can choose start, I can choose finish, all of that. Now, interestingly start finish that might be the approach that i used in in, in solving uh Gowin's problem so this would be disconnected slicer okay and basically and, and again go, go back and you saw how i created it where i just go in there enter data mm -hmm. and and i would in that i would create um all the options that you want right so maybe there maybe there are two disconnected slicers like two disconnected slicers and uh, slicer one is gonna is gonna options gonna have that uh, uh, start off first maybe let's stick with their terminology you you may want to change this to first task second task something like that mm -hmm. slicer two so so the starting point can either be the start of the first task or the end or the finish finish task of a. task a and mm -hmm. the end point can be either a start of task B and, and or finish of task B. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and again, maybe you rename it to first task, second task, something okay. like that. Um, maybe I'll call it out here. Task A is equal to first task. Task B equal to second task. Got it. So and but how then how do you then hook it up? Well, so then you would detect detect what is selected using again what you saw earlier and folks who are in my course uh, just look for the disconnected slicer module in the main course i think it's in the dax one so what is selected you, you just say okay so wh what did they select so oh they selected the start of task a or they selected this one and then you're going to use uh, if then to control the next steps Okay. Right, so if you'll say, "Oh, they selected the start of task A," eh? then, so you notice, right? I mean, you know, this part is now going to be variable, where we are saying demo start. There's going to be mm -hmm. if then else statement. So it's going to okay. say, "Oh, if they selected, they want to see start of the task." Uh, let me go to sorry task A. So right now we defaulted to finish, but now you're going to have an if then statement here. So you're going to say, "If mm -hmm. what they selected is start of task A, eh? then I'm going to use demo start." If they mm -hmm. used finish, then I'm going to use demo finish, right? So okay. there's going to be if then else statement there, mm -hmm. and that would take you home. Okay. Okay, boy. Uh, <laughs> so we're doing good so far, but um, what about this one? Oh, okay. So what if there were multiple projects? So for one, let us see 
I expect it to fail when there are multiple projects selected. I just don't know how. So let's just see how it fails. So I'm going to go back here and, and remove that assumption by just clearing it. Okay, here goes nothing. So I cleared it and, and yeah, nothing nothing works. Right. So um, so let me go back to maybe 205. I'm hoping that I had fewer records. Let's see. Oh, well, probably the same amount of records. So this, we are back again on human learning. I'm, I'm stuck. How would a human solve it? Like, I don't know how to solve it. There are multiple projects. What do you want me to do, Xiao? Like, I know how to solve it for one project, and that answer is 30. I got that answer, but then what do you want me to do next? I calculate the next one? Oops. Yes. So, okay, so let's go through that. So again, this is human learning, right? I don't care about Power BI yet. So for this one, I'll solve it the same way. Finish of this, so this is, uh, uh, I'll get 612, and then, uh, oops, start of this. So this one is, is weird because it's, it's negative. Should we ignore this? I don't know, is this just sample data? Maybe we can look at, uh, um, yeah, I don't know how to handle that one. Can we give it, um, or, or pretend yeah. that it's a feature. Yeah. Type? Pretend that's yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, let's pretend, pretend that's like that this one is six. July 1st, maybe. Okay. Let, let's do six fifteen. So the okay. answer to the first project was if you asked me, what is the answer for four forty five, I said 30 and we built a measure to say it's 30. And mm -hmm. if you would ask me, oh, actually, you know what? Let's let's just do this. Uh, let's add, uh, let's add a slicer for project. Ooh, that would be fun. Project name, I think. Project name slicer. Oh gosh, please now. Uh, list. So if you ask me for four forty-five, I I know the answer. Well, actually, it's mm -hmm. thirty-one. So I know the answer for that. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me the answer for 768, and, and again, we're gonna pretend that this one is yeah. uh, 615. Let's say, so this one is uh, 615, and then I would say the answer is three, right? Mm -hmm. So in one case, the answer is 31, in mm -hmm. the other case is three. So mm -hmm. again, we wouldn't worry about the rest of the projects for now. Let's say if uh, project 445 answer is 31, Project seven six eight six twelve to six fifteen. Answer is three. Mm -hmm. Then what is the overall answer? If both uh, are selected. The over. What do you, oh, the overall answer. I want to know the average of uh, the duration across all projects. Yes. The, the all right, average. That's yeah, that's it. That, that's, yeah. It. that's all I need. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, perfect. So I think this one is really easy. So again, I, I needed to kind of understand it as human. But what you're going to do is, so we already have a formula which works at one project. Mm -hmm. So, and, and now... We iterate it? Exactly, exactly. Oh my yeah. gosh, yeah, you're good, you're good. So, <laughs> yep, so we iterate and uh, uh, what, is, what is the class of functions which are iterators in Power BI? Uh, the x functions. Yeah, the x functions. Yep. Calculate x. Uh, uh, well, you're close. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. Sum x, max x, min x, and good for us, there is average x, right? So that's the one we're going to use. Yeah. But each mm -hmm. each x function is exactly the same, almost, right? So they're all mm -hmm. iterators. Now the catch here is, believe me, this was like my one of my frustrating points, is that not all x functions have the word X in them. I really, really wish they did because that would make things so much simpler. So there is one which is filter, which is a big one. Filter should actually be filter X, but it isn't. There's no X in the name, but it is still part of the X function family. There is another one which I forget, which is the same one. Um, all right, so anyway, so we're gonna use X functions and we're gonna use average X. So basically you're gonna say average X, so we're gonna iterate and what do you wanna iterate over well, again, what were we iterating over as a human? Project. We were going project by project. We said, oh, mm -hmm. for this project, answer is 31. For this project, answer is 3. Mm -hmm. So you would say, yep, iterate over project. Mm -hmm. And you can't quite say it that way. So you would say values, values. project, okay. uh, mm -hmm. demo project, right? the table name. So demo table name, project, mm -hmm. right? Project name in your case. 
iterate over das and whatever we call their measure. Yeah, that's so, the measure you use to um, calculate the time collapse, collapse right? Exactly. That one. So yeah. Time okay. Collapse, great. Right? So, great. Right? And 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 that's it. So this one is so easy. I wanna I wanna try it. Um, man. Um, okay. I mean, it has some negative values, but I think it's gonna work. So time elapsed. So let's just go over there. So we're gonna do new measure. And we'll say average time elapsed for all projects. Average X values, project name, time elapsed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll see how it does. Okay, so for one, I'm just uh, oh shoot, I'm 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 a little nervous here. But let's see. So we put project name here. And and I want to show a card. And I want to put average time elapsed on that one. Okay, so obviously it, it works for a single one. So in our case, uh, 445 is 31. Oops. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, let's 334 and minus 90. Okay, let's ignore that. 445 is 31. 768 is uh, minus 11. 975 minus 17. I think this one is negative two. Okay, cool. So let's try 445. Uh, so what's the average of uh, 31 and minus 11? Uh, 10. Is it? Okay, cool. So mm -hmm. that's our expected answer. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yeah. So so yeah. So that one is easy, and 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 yeah, and, and that one is kind of robust. It it just it's finishing done. Great. Cool. So um yeah, the file is I think you're already in the Talk Power BI Club. So the the same place where you got the call in link. Just click on mm -hmm. the files, and mm -hmm. I'm just gonna make sure that the file is uploaded. Sometimes it takes just a little bit. Thank you so much. That really helps. Absolutely. Well. So thanks to Shava for bringing in a fun question. If you enjoyed that, <laughs> let us know in the comment box. Uh, I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, but folks, um, yeah, as I was talking to Shao, it's, it's, I, I think that learning doing gap is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, so everything that I've built kind of tried to stop that. All right. Thanks, Shao. And yeah. Thank good, you. Good with, Have a uh, great day. Rest of the stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, follow the next steps. And hopefully you can come back to us and check in and see how. OK. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Whew. Man, it's 12 five. Yeah, again, anything short of three hours. And I'm like, oh, gosh, it, it didn't go well today. <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't think that way. Uh, as long as you guys are hanging out with me. Um, okay, I guess uh, we'll we'll call it good on that. Um, hope you guys all have a great weekend. Uh, what else? So again, check out on my on our website. If you are part of a small or medium business, and uh, you would want us want an expert to work on your project for free. Oops, what did I do? Then go to our website learnpowerbi.com. And, and you know what? I'll, I'll just put the link here as well. Uh, so I, I should say, if you were somebody you know, right? And I'm not really sure if my comments are going through or not. Ooh, editor, try again. Actually, my comments are not going through. That's weird. Um, anyway, so just go to learnpowerbi.com and click on the real Power BI link. And um, I'm going to walk you through this a little bit. So again, the idea is simple: get free help with your Power BI project. Is there a catch? You bet there is. There is a catch. Nothing is free, right? There's no free lunch. That's what they say. And and so we've done Real Power BI before, so I'll talk talk to you about the catch, but still I think it's an amazing opportunity, right? So um, uh, uh, so this time what we're doing differently is we are targeting, um, uh, we are focused on small and medium businesses because that's where we feel there is a catch. Nothing is free, right? Oops. There's no free lunch. That's what they say. Sorry. And Sorry. and on, so guys. we've done real power BI before, so I'll talk talk to you about the catch, but still I think it's an amazing opportunity, right? So uh, 
sorry about that. Um, okay, so um, uh, so yeah, so you or your friends let them know, and so I, you know, on the page I talk a little bit about how the small businesses they have their own unique challenges, but I think they also have this amazing opportunity in Power BI. In a way, I feel that small businesses or small and medium businesses are better positioned than large businesses to leverage Power BI. Why? Because what I see is that large businesses, I mean, they have these large systems and there's there's a lot of red tape and maybe for good reason, right? I mean, so often when Power BI gets introduced, even before it gets introduced, they're like, oh, but wait a second, let's do the study, let's evaluate these tools. And even when they select Power BI, it's like, okay, cool, now IT is gonna figure out what's the best way to deploy. And I don't think that's the best way to run things. I like going ground up, right? I, I really think ground up, agile, iterative cycles. So we have seen this. I have seen this with the companies that I worked with that small and medium businesses, once they're on board, once they get started rolling with Power BI, they can actually run much, much faster uh, than big businesses. So, so I think that's a unique opportunity there. It's gonna agile, agile, it's gonna give you results quicker, but you also know that it's a very robust, scalable system and it's, it's, it's affordable, it's within reach. You know, earlier a BI solution, you could pay easily millions of dollars. We used to pay for a team of 300 people, we used to pay $2 million just in maintenance. That wasn't the cost to build the model and it was pretty shitty. <laughs> you know, it didn't even work. Everybody just exported Excel. So yeah, I mean, the traditional BI, it cost a lot and it didn't even work, right? So, so that was that. So, so real power BI want to come in and we want to help the small and medium businesses with their project for free. So what is the catch? Well, the catch is that it is application based, uh, but it's going to be a simple application. You fill it out. You tell us a little bit about what your project is, what you have in mind, and then we're going to match it up with, uh, you know, some of our best members inside our learn power BI family, right? So really the pro plus group uh, of the best that we're running at. And we have members all throughout the world, so we're pretty excited about this. Last time we had projects, we had a project from uh, Kenya, we had a project from a ski resort in Utah, so we had a lot of exciting stuff going on. And of course, uh, we'll see, so yeah, so doesn't matter where you are, what kind of project, what industry, I think we can, we can serve all of that. But um, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see based on selections and so forth. Um, and uh, well, so this was Kimberly Marie. She was the original real Power BI, uh, you know, enthusiast, right? Uh, the business person who who had brought in her project. Since then, we've done a few rounds of this. But I loved what she said, and we, we at some point maybe would even publish the interview. Uh, she was gracious enough to let me interview her on video, but. Yeah, I mean, you can you can read some of the stuff that she's talking about, like, you know, love seeing visually, everything everything that I need to see, like put it together on a single picture, huge wake up call. I mean, otherwise, a lot of these businesses just running day to day. And I love what she said here. It's like, hey, that this could be the difference maker. And I really, truly believe that, especially in the modern world. And if you think about this, if your competitor starts to use these tools, they're gonna blow you out of the water, right? They're gonna outcompete you on every single front. And again, it's not gonna happen overnight, but again, over time, you're gonna get buried, right? So I don't think the, the distinction between embracing this new age of BI, starting to leverage your data, it's not about, oh, we can do better. No, it's a fight for survival. If you don't adopt it, I think you're going the way of dinosaurs. I think those businesses are going to be extinct because again, you're gonna be outcompeted on every single front. It's not as dire right now because frankly, the, uh, the adoption isn't that much, right? But it's soon going to turn that way. Now, of course, you can be in the front of that tide, uh, front of the wave by jumping on it right now. Uh, so again, the application is coming soon. Um, I was trying to put a wait list or something but that hasn't happened. So just stay, stay tuned. And yeah, again, if you or your friends, uh, you or somebody you know uh, works at a small and medium business, then let them know that, hey, this will be a great opportunity. All right, so we'll sign off for that. Uh, until next time, power on my friends.